rangers, forest workers, hunters, and other woods people of Reddit, what is your scary experience in the woods that you still can't explain? A few years back, when I was around the age of 14 and my brother was 9, my dad, my little brother, and I all went out deer hunting in the afternoon right before sundown. While we were walking through the woods, before we even got started, my little brother tugged on my arm and asked me if I saw that. I said that it was probably his imagination and he let go of my arm. A few minutes later, I couldn't hear him walking behind us anymore, and turn around to find him gone. I quickly told my dad and we looked for him for, at the least, half an hour, when he walked over out of nowhere towards the both of us, he was covered in mud like he'd fallen somewhere. I worriedly asked where he'd gone and he just stared at me, telling me that he couldn't remember and thought that he had never left. He acted normally afterwards just as nothing had happened, I don't know if this is really scary to anyone else, but it shook my entire family, including myself, quite a bit. Edit, to answer a few of your questions. Several of you have been asking whether or not he could tell or show me where he had been and the answer is no. As I said, although I hadn't specified, so that might have been on me, he told me that he couldn't remember a thing. Not what happened. Not why he was covered in mud, not why he had walked away in the first place, nor that he had walked away at all. The only thing that he said he could recall was walking a few steps away from us, after seeing a doe from behind him, and that's it. He told me that he genuinely hadn't remembered walking away from us and acted like no time had passed. Also, one of you had asked how muddy it was. I distinctly remember that we had several flood warnings and heavy rains before then but it wasn't like knee-high deep mud. It had been in the middle of fall and I can remember myself being irritated at the mud and leaves sticking to my boots. He wasn't drenched in mud, after we found him, but his knees and the palms of his hands were coated in it, along with having a few splotches here and there on his clothes. I had one other question on whether or not I asked him what he saw in the first place. He had initially told me after the entire event that he had saw a glimpse of a tall person standing next to a tree, which I, to be completely honest, doubt. As a kid, I also had one hell of an imagination, and was very paranoid, which I believe was passed down from my mother to the two of us. Lastly, someone had asked how I had found him? I'm not sure if that's the right way to word it. Anyways. All three of us had been walking north and later on, when I did find him, he had trotted out of the woods, avoiding trees, from the west. Before he had gotten to me, he hadn't really spoke, until I ran up to him and hugged him, asking if he was okay. I hope this answers most of the questions you had. Kinda creepy thing happened to me when I was a student forester this summer. So. The forest I was working in was about 20 kms from the nearest town which contained around 1200 people and we usually set out for whatever task we have to do in the forest at around 7 am. So we are at the forest at around 7.30 am and we are about 12 kms up the road when we turn a corner very slowly and see what I initially thought to be a weird looking bush or statue but it was in fact a person, sitting on a carved out stump on the side of the road, just sitting there. What really threw me off was the fact that this person had a parka on and a balaclava underneath it in the middle of summer. We drove by this person real slow and he lifted a hand to wave slowly as we drove past and it was just super creepy. Never saw them again after that but it did make going out on excursions a little more uneasy sometimes when alone. Not my story, but my younger sister's, early 20s. She was in Colorado last year and went hiking with her friend. The plan was to hike up the mountain, stop midway and camp, then finish the hike the next morning. They started their hike and stopped for camp midway. She said it started dumping rain that night which meant the top would most likely be snow. The next morning they continued their hike, but it started getting complicated. Her friend only wore choco sandals and not proper hiking boots as they didn't expect the snow. They stopped at a creek and were deciding if they wanted to turn back on account they weren't prepared properly when they heard a faint help me. They both stood still. They heard it again. They decided to follow up the creek to the woman's voice. They got to a clearing that was covered in snow and found a woman laying in it in basic athletic clothing, 
leggings, light pullover jacket, and athletic shoes. My sister said her legs were swollen, discolored and had nasty cuts on them. My sister asked her how long she had been out there and the woman said only a few hours. My sister was like okay we need to get you down this mountain. The woman was like no I need to go up the mountain that's where my car is parked. My sister was like, no, there is no driving access at the top of the mountain which was a sign that this woman was confused. They get her down the mountain and my sister just kept saying how confused this woman was. They get to the bottom and they find this woman's car. My sister couldn't get cell service to call 911 during this BTW. Anyways, my sister tells this woman she's going to drive her to the hospital but the woman is standing strong that she would just like to go back to her bed and breakfast. My sister takes her there while driving this woman's car. Once the woman is at the bed and breakfast she thanks them and goes in. My sister spoke to the owners and was like you have to call a medic, she is severely confused and not acting normal. They call a medic and transport her to a hospital. Turns out this woman is from Chicago has low blood pressure and it was her first time ever hiking a mountain, she was also alone. She had passed out during her hike, then it dumped snow on her. She was hypothermic and only thought she'd been out for a few hours, she was out overnight in the dark, cold and alone. I couldn't imagine the terror she must have felt. Anyways, my sister went and saw her at the hospital and the woman thanked her for saving her life. They still lightly keep in touch. I've shared this story before. We have a camp that we visit during the hunting months and about every other week and in between that. To get to our camp, you have to turn off of a major road onto a gravel road, drive about a mile, then turn onto another gravel road for about a half mile. It's set between a few other camps, plus some residents that live out there. It's quiet, for the most part. There are some coyotes and bobcats. Bobcats are the worst due to their terrible scream. It sounds like a woman crying for help. There has also been a black panther and wild dogs. 2013 we were at the camp for Thanksgiving. We hunted, fished, cooked, drank, all that good camp stuff. On night, we're sitting around a fire, swapping funny stories and just listening to the silence of the woods. As we're talking, we all hear, help me. At first, we thought it was a bobcat. We listened some more and heard it again. It was a man's voice yelling help me. Repeatedly. Now, our first instinct was to grab our guns. Second was to go towards the voice, but you never know what you will encounter in the woods. It was dark and cold. The hunters knew the area very well. We called the police, and explained everything to the responding officers. The weird part was that we never once heard it while the officers were with us. Not once. The officers left and we heard the man again, repeating help me. About half an hour later, the officers came back and we didn't hear any call for help. Again, silence. We all decided it was best to go inside our camp for the night. We never did find out anything. I've only been back to the camp once since then. Really freaked me out. I've lived in the Smokies most of my life. Anywhere I've lived in the Smokies, I've been completely surrounded by woods, naturally. One night at like 1am I was sitting on my porch drinking a beer. If you haven't lived out here, during the summertime, nature is loud. It isn't quiet. Cicadas humming, frogs belching, etc. It's like the ultimate white noise. While I was drinking my beer, I had noticed that everything in the woods had gone quiet which is pretty easy to notice when you live here because that doesn't happen. Suddenly, I heard the most terrifying noise I had ever heard about, MMM, I think maybe a good 30 or 40 meters away from me. It was a loud, shrieking, literally blood-curdling scream like shrill. It sounded dot 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 non-human. It want a mountain lion because I've heard them before, and they're rare in the area I lived. I stood up, audibly said nope and walked the fuck inside. That was the one and only time that ever happened. I still live in the same house, and still drink the same beer on the same porch. We always built the tiki house in our woods, just some normal kids, and had loads of fun. But every week when we came back, it was destroyed and we were sad as hell, and always built a new one. 
One day we saw a guy in a black hoodie taking our sticks apart. We never came back. Not my story, but my dad's. When my dad was in his 20s, he was staying with my mom at a small cabin in the woods of Colorado. It was fairly remote, there was another cabin about a mile away in a campground maybe three miles down the valley. Late one afternoon, he was out fishing on a nearby river by himself. As the light started fading, he decided to call it a day and head back to the cabin for dinner. Late one afternoon, he was out fishing on a nearby river by himself. As the light started fading, he decided to call it a day and head back to the cabin for dinner. He nervously kept walking back, a little quicker, and then heard another stick break, whirls around and still, nothing. This happens like three or four times, but every time he stopped to listen and look, there was total silence and nothing else moving. By the time he finally made it back to the cabin, it was nearly dark. He never did find out what was following him, but whatever it was left him alone after that. His best guess was a mountain lion stalking him or something. Really unsettling though. We lived on the Hopi slash Navajo reservation growing up. My mom and I were feeding the horses very early in the morning before I went to school. It was still almost completely dark out when we hear this low, dim humming noise. The horses start acting really nervous, ours included. Sweating, pacing, nostrils flared, eyes showing white the works. We feed them and walk out from the barn slash shack trying to figure out what's happened. We look up after scanning the horizon for anything squinting as best as we could, and there is a black triangle-like thing hovering right over us. It was almost completely silent. It was perfectly over us so you couldn't see it unless you looked straight up and it felt like it was so close I could touch it. It was pretty damn large too like a long triangle. Smooth and black. Thinking back, it was actually quite impressive and beautiful. Mom mom grabbed me and ran back into the shed. This was before cell phones were really a thing so she just clutched me and told me not to make a sound. We waited for what felt like ages but was probably only two to three more minutes. The horses weren't even eating, they just paced the shed inside back and forth. Finally the horses started settling down to eat and my mom went outside. It was gone. We felt like we had the flu the rest of the day and I stayed home. We never told my dad. I think it was some sort of military aircraft since around the reservation there are quiet, secret military setups but who knows. Couple good friends of mine fight fires and in Wa State Summers business is usually booming. This year a fair sized crew of about 10 of them are miles and miles deep into the cascades doing dig lines. I'm talking like 60 miles away from anything, middle of nowhere. As they're hiking through they come to a clearing and there's two landed Black Hawk helicopters and about seven fully armed military personnel. They all point their rifles at the fire crew and demand to know what they are doing there. My friend tells them they're doing fire digs and they're scheduled to be up there. They are told to turn around and forget that they saw anything up there. My friend says but this is government work, we have to do this, this is our job. Military guy says not today, you're done, get the fuck out of here now. Some serious chronicle type shit. I've never wanted to know so badly about what the hell was going in out there. I've lived on the high desert for most of my life, 6000 above sea level if you're wondering. I was out riding my horse alone in the absolute middle of BFE in the Badlands, no trees, and hardly any brush to speak of so sounds carry a long way and there is nowhere to hide for long, when all of a sudden his ears perk up. I feel my skin start to crawl like we're being watched. My normally mellow gelding, starts to panic. I start to feel really dizzy, and my horse stumbles. I black out. I come to an hour or so later about three miles away from the inciting incident still on my horse. He is frothing with sweat and shaking all over. I'm still not sure what happened. I had plenty of water and snacks. It was 65-ish degrees and breezy, so I don't believe weather or dehydration slash hunger were a factor. I have never before or after had a fainting spell, and that was the most reliable, quiet horse I've ever owned. I now have a serious case of the heebie-jeebies again just thinking about it. Friend and I were hiking in the woods. He was at the camp and I went to check on things about half a mile away. Suddenly, as if someone flipped a switch, the woods became silent. No wind, no rustling leaves, no birds. Just the most eerie silence I've experienced. After a few minutes, 
it suddenly went back to normal forest noises. Thinking I must have had a seizure or temporary deafness or something I hurry back to camp, only to see friend standing there with a confused slash scared look on his face. I must have had a similar look because he immediately asked if I heard the silence. We tried to come up with an explanation, but absolute silence in the woods seems impossible. Even more so that it was so sudden. Buckle in for a long one. TLDR at the bottom. When I was six, my babysitter was this nice middle-aged lady and her equally nice husband. My twin brother and I were always at their house in the summer and we hung out with the couple's two grandkids, another boy and girl siblings set of similar ages. This was literally my happy place. This lady had the best movie collection for a six-year-old. It is where I saw the last unicorn for the first time, as well as the little mermaid, the great mouse detective, the first land before time, and the brave little toaster. And her husband was a phenomenal cook by a kid's standard. Every day was chicken nuggets and pizza day. They had kid-size four-wheelers, a pool, a huge kid's playhouse and jungle gym set up in the backyard. And they put on the best 4th of July show in the county for years. Six-year-old me was the happiest girl on the freaking planet. They were some of the wealthiest people in our area too. Neither one of them worked so I have no idea where the money came from but I didn't care. One day, midsummer, the two boys were being typical boys and the little girl and I thought they were being mean. In reality, the boys wanted to play war or something and the girls wanted to play wedding. Or something similarly stupid. Whatever. She and I were sad and we refused to play with the boys. Instead, we decided to go pick flowers that grew at the edge of the forest. We thought it was baby's breath but it was really just poison hemlock, seriously. Kids, right? So we are walking along the edge of this dense forest in the middle of banjo country in southern Ohio. This was in 1990 so we weren't worried about stranger danger because we were just so far out in the country. The adults did worry about animals from time to time because the next county over has bears and mountain lions but us six-year-olds were fearless. We ended up walking onto the neighbor's property picking these flowers when we found a break in the tree line. It was an old, well-worn path leading into the woods. For whatever reason, e, we were dumb, she and I decided to ditch our flowers and take the path in the woods and see what it led to. The path itself was unremarkable. Well-worn but unmaintained as there were tree roots growing up through the path in places. We came upon a little bridge at one point. We were both a little confused about it because we had been told there were no creeks in our area yet here was a bridge. It wasn't a particularly old bridge either. But the creek bed under it was dry as a bone. Weird. We kept going because. Why not, I guess. I'm not sure how far we walked beyond the bridge but we ended up in a clearing with stones all around it in a circle. The clearing was big enough that there was a gap in the trees that allowed the sunlight in. And in the middle of the circle was a massive stone-walled well. It was big enough that there were stairs built into the dam walls in a huge spiral. My little friend was mesmerized by the well. She found a rock and tossed it in. We never heard it hit the bottom. As we were searching for more rocks to throw in, I was routing around in the brush by the bigger stones and actually looked at the big ones. These were not normal stones. Nope. I was a smart cookie, already reading at a third grade level the summer before first grade, something I loved to show off to anyone that would sit still for three seconds or more, so I could read the stupid stones. There were names and dates cut into rough hewn stone. We were in a fucking graveyard. In the middle of the woods. Far away from our adults. I remember getting chills realizing the this. Moments later, my little friend got really quiet and poked me. She pointed to the edge of the clearing on the other side of the well. Thankfully, not the side that we had entered the graveyard on. My little heart would have exploded, I think. She was pointing at a dark shape standing just inside the woods facing us. We both stood up very slowly and stared at this dark shape. At some point, the little girl took my hand and tried to get me to leave but I couldn't move. The fear was paralyzing. 
It didn't move until the clouds covered the sun and are bright, inviting clearing became slightly shadowy. Then, the shape moved. It was an adult-shaped, sized thing wearing long dark robes with a hood over its face. We were stupid kids but we weren't that fucking stupid. We both turned tail and ran as fast as our little legs allowed. My friend was faster than me because I was a chunker, a kid with a love of reading and movies and pizza is overweight, who would have thunk it. So she made it to the bridge first. I wasn't far behind her though. I looked back after we got over the bridge and that asshole was standing at the edge of the bridge. Just standing there. I screamed, pissed myself, and kept running. I tripped over a tree route in the path, ripping my pants and shredding my knee in the process. I scrambled up and kept running. We burst out of the trees like our hair was on fire, screaming and crying, and made a beeline for the girl's grandparents' house. Her grandfather was in the backyard planting something and came running when he heard us. We were absolutely hysterical and nothing could calm us down. We spent hours sobbing while the grandma and grandpa got us bathed and in clean clothes and tried to soothe us. The more they said there was no one in the woods, the more hysterical we became. It took both of us months before we'd even go onto the back deck again. Everyone was convinced we made up the story with our hyperactive imaginations but the adults humored us. The kids, not so much. The next summer, we were forced into the backyard for the annual 4th of July party. Tons of kids. They all knew our story and one of the teenage boys, a badass, don't Chano, called bullshit. He bullied us for hours until we told him where the path in the woods was. And then he made us go with him. Hey, another incident of me pissing my pants. Yay! To my utter relief, when we got to where she and I both remembered the path being, there was nothing. No path. Just a very heavy growth of hemlock. He tried to wade through it and ended up with chiggers from neck to foot. And he got in a ton of trouble for dragging us kids down there once we got back. So she and I were relieved not to go back but from then on, all those kids thought we were stone cold liars. Fast forward 15 years later, 16 years after this all happened, my mom mentioned that the grandpa passed away a few months prior while I was off to school. I was 22 at that point and had mostly forgotten the events in the woods. I expressed my condolences and asked what happened. I mean, this guy was a friend of my mom's for 20 plus years. My mom started being evasive so I got curious and pressed her. She said that he had hung himself in their garage. Jesus. Wow, okay. That sucks. And then she told me the bad part. His granddaughter, my little friend was the one that found his body. All around him were notebooks with crazy person writings that he had amassed over a very long time, some dating back to the early 70s apparently, detailing his dealings with demons and spirits and other crazy things. He had left notes for all of his loved ones. The note for his granddaughter was an apology for not protecting her from the demon at the well. And the note for his wife was an apology for leaving her as it was the only way to protect her and the other people he loved. It seems that the explanation for their wealth was deals struck with the demons. After a few decades of these deals, they had started coming to collect on the debts the old man owed and what they wanted was for him to kill his family in payment so he killed himself instead. It was the craziest thing I had ever heard but it made total fucking sense. Everyone wrote the guy off as having a serious mental health issue, they threw the journals away, buried him, and moved on. No investigations. Nothing. I can rationalize everything we saw and experienced as some kind of weird psychological reaction to picking hemlock. That wouldn't explain how both of us had the exact same delusion though. I know what I saw was real. I might not remember all the details nearly 30 years after the fact but I remember the fear. And I still have a scar on my knee that had never faded. I'm not afraid of the woods or the dark or anything. But I have a very healthy respect for the dead and I don't fuck with demon shit. In the immortal words of Ducky, nope, nope, nope. DLDR, idyllic childhood ruined by a crazy demon worshipper.
Mine was not of monsters but of humans. TLDR at bottom. My friends and I were high in the woods deep in the Sierra Nevadas in the California backcountry and decided to travel a few miles off a path to reach a river and shoot at targets with our 22. The path is littered with deer bones and claw marks from bears so we're freaking out a bit but finally make it to where we set up camp. I notice off in the distance about a half mile upstream the river there are two men walking towards us in the exact direction we are firing our gun. I yell at the guys for them to stop shooting and we just watch these men, wide-eyed and in their late 20s and early 30s walking quickly alongside the river when suddenly they both decide to jump in. I should say at this point that the river is moving very quickly and could easily sweep you under and is definitely not safe for a casual swim. We watch as both the men are swept away towards us downstream. One of my friends, we'll call him Mike, decides to be brave and get close to the edge and extend a piece of wood for them to grab as they're about to pass us. Both the men latch on and Mike is the hero pulling them to shore. When everyone catches their breath we asked the men what they were doing out here as it's super remote and they were at least 3 or 4 miles from the nearest trail and why they both jumped in the deadly river they give us short answers like oh we were just having fun boys and just free swimming the river. While they're leering at us. Immediately the hairs on the back of my neck stand up and every fiber in my body tells me they mean us harm. We tell them we're going to head back to the trail and they say they're coming with us. Given that we're so far off from civilization and these guys are clearly high on something and a danger to themselves we reluctantly agree to allow them to follow us. It was the most quiet hike of my life. I felt them trying to feel out if they could take us in a fight. There were three of us and two of them and we had a 22 but were young squirrely adults. I don't know how to explain it but the hike was us constantly positioning against each other with body language without ever directly fighting. They would get close to the gun and try to both be near it then we would counter by getting between them and the gun as naturally as possible while hiking up a path that was littered in bare claw marks and dung. We finally make it to the car and they decide we weren't suitable targets and moved on. No idea what two random guys were doing risking their life in a freezing cold raging river in the Sierra Nevadas or why they felt the need to size up if they could attack three random teens but I'm glad nothing happened that day. TLDR, went hiking in the woods with friends as teens. Almost shot some random crazies. Crazies fall into river and we save them. Then crazies proceed to position themselves to fight us. Eventually get away. About 20 years ago I had just finished my degree and was bummed because I couldn't find a job. A former roommate slash good friend and I went on an overnight backpack trip near Burr Oak State Park in southeast Ohio. About 2 a.m. we were awoken in our tent by the sound of dozens of horses being ridden all around us. We could hear muted conversation, harness jingling, hoofs clopping and we could feel it shaking the ground. We laid in our tent and the sound just kept on, like a whole convoy was passing right beside us. After a few minutes we unzipped the tent and the sounds immediately ceased and nothing was there. It was freaky, we were afraid they were going to ride over us it was so intense. I have no idea who or what it was but we're camped on a trail that had been used by John Morgan Hunt's Confederate Raiders during the Civil War. Not a logical explanation but it was deafening there were so many horses. I can still hear men's voices murmuring as they rode by. Next morning not a single hoof print to be found. I was driving from Tucson to Denver in the middle of the night. Got tired, was pulling off and crawl in a sleeping bag in the desert far away from the two-lane blacktop I was on. Highway 666 BTW, it's since been renamed because everybody was stealing the signs. Anyway he pulled off the road, onto a dirt road and then a little further. Kind of hid the truck behind some vegetation and tossed down a sleeping bar and pad in the middle of pitch black huge star New Mexico night. No one around, no light, nothing at all. Visibility for miles. I'm completely fucking alone in pitch black nothing I'm getting on down in my eyes are getting droopy. Then I hear it. It sounds goofy to say but it's the same Indian music you'd hear in old black and white westerns. Native music, voices and a drum. I literally think I'm dreaming and when it starts I'm fucking petrified because that noise just appearing out of nothing simply put ice in my veins. Relax a little and unfreeze, 
and try to be logical about what I'm hearing, which has no physical manifestation of its origin. So dot dot thinking logically. No instead of pure panic. I could be on the reservation at this point. Perhaps it's coming from behind a previously unseen hill. I get up, look around. I don't see anything at all. It kind of comes and goes in volume. Doesn't seem to be coming from a direction. I have no clue. I looked for evidence and didn't find any. Crawled back in the bag because I'd been driving for hours, and they sang all night. Logic tells me it had to be a group of people I didn't see. But I looked, and there were no ancillary noises like talking or stopping or anything. Just that Indian drum. And the hey ya hey What was originally terrifying became calling and I ended up sleeping fantastically. Later learned that was a terrible stretch of road for very bad things to happen. It sort of lived up to its 666 moniker for Rex and bad shit occurring apparently. I've spent a lot of time in fairly wild places and never had an incident that I couldn't explain. Doesn't make them much less scary, though. When you figure out it's a cougar, bear, moose, or strange human, it's not like you exhale and relax. The scariest moment for me, to date, was the grizzly that was circling our comp in the dusk at about 20 meters. Packed my family into the car as fast as we could move but it wouldn't have been fast enough if the bear had attacked. I really regret it, I feel that I failed as a parent, because it's only luck that nothing horrible happened. I don't think I'll ever forget seeing its green eyes bobbing and swaying in my headlamp. It briefly rushed our vehicle as we left, too. Scary as fuck. Ed, the closest I ever came to an inexplicable moment was when I was walking though trail less black spruce up north in the fall and suddenly hit a wall of odor the likes of which I'd never smelled before. Stopped me in my tracks. Some instinct told me that it was a bull moose, and sure enough, in about 20 more meters, there was a clearing with a massive bull. It was rutting season so I got the hell up. I was hiking through the remnants of a remote, long abandoned town and the surrounding area. To get to as far into the woods as I was, you had to cross fallen trees over a creek three times. I had just crossed the third bridge and was about five miles in and something blue caught my eye just ahead of me. There was a man, in his sixties at least, wearing blue satin pajamas, sitting in a tree. The closer I got to him the louder he laughed, it wasn't a maniacal laugh, but it set off all the alarms in my head nevertheless. He also wasn't wearing any shoes and looked well groomed slash cleaned. I gave him a friendly nod as I passed and he just kept laughing. Then it stopped. I turned and he was gone. There was no branch cracking, plants rustling, nothing. He was just gone. Still rubs me the wrong way. The area I was in was a pretty rough hike, very secluded. Not very many people venture as deep as I was that day. No idea what was going on there. I live in South Spain, near some really ancient forest called Los Alcornocles, which has some kind of trees that are almost extinct and only grow here and in another two or so places. It's a bit of a rocky terrain, and if you ever are walking on the forest and try to climb some rocks, you should be really careful, because usually you can have caves and hollow spaces under your feet and you can fall easily. So, my father and his friends usually go hiking on Thursdays so they don't find anyone on the woods, besides maybe a shepherd or a forest worker, and on this day they decided to climb a really large and rocky hill. My uncle Frank remembered that when he was young he slept on a little cave when he went hunting and got lost, and he wanted to try to find that cave. After a few hours, they find the cave. It was covered in moss and grime but it was surely the same cave. One of my father's friend, John, tried to get as far as possible into the cave, because he was in a really good shape and wanted to see all of it. The rest of them waited outside. Suddenly. John started screaming and calling for my father. He went inside and turned on his torch. Inside of the cave was a really weird shrine or something like that, with candles, two apples, bones, pieces of coal and ashes on the ground, a pair of gloves, a pot and a pan, etc. Everything looked really old and dusty and it was clear it hadn't been touched in a long time. My father went to the shrine and it had a little bowl, and when he looked inside, 
there was something that looked like human teeth. When they got out, they packed up all their things and got out of there really fast. My father refuses to hike around there anymore, and they started hiking on the other side of the hill and into the woods. All of this was really strange, and I've never heard of something like this before. I don't know anything about voodoo or this kind of things, but my father said it looked like some voodoo shrine or some stuff like that. If any if you guys know something like this, I would appreciate an explanation. I was once canoeing the boundary waters between Minnesota and Canada. These aren't your normal backyard ponds. The boundary waters are thousands of enormous lakes interconnected with each other, think many great lakes. We had been canoeing and camping along the lakes for about a week at this point. We didn't really have an itinerary, just planned to boat and camp, fish, and live off the land two weeks. We had a GPS and a sat phone to call a helicopter for pickup whenever we were done. Anyway, about a week in and we were set to canoe a few hours to the next lake. An hour or so in and we are in the center of a extremely long and narrow lake. Unfortunately, a storm started to blow in and the waves on the lake swelled to two plus feet. Too much for our dinky canoes. We pull off to a random clearing on the shore and set up camp in rush to avoid being totally thrashed by a rainstorm. We just set up camp and hunkered down for the night. By the next morning it had cleared up. We started walking up the coast of the lake about 200 feet from our camp looking for a good fishing spot. What we actually found was another campsite. However, it was absolutely wrecked. Trash strewn everywhere, tent collapsed and torn, clothes on the ground. At first we were just like disgusted like what assholes did this? Or left their shit out to be bare food? The more we looked around though, the weirder things seemed though. For one, their garbage was still hoisted into a tree to keep it safe from bears, but the whole bag was ripped open despite being 30 feet in the air. Second, literally everything except the canoes were still at the campsite. Clothes, packs, food, rope, pans, like a serious set of hiking equipment. Enough for two or three people. Half of it was trashed and torn open, mostly the packs, tent, and clothes. The other half was totally untouched but thrown on the ground. Like somebody noped the hell out of there in nothing but their long johns ditching hundreds of dollars of gear in the process. We waited a couple hours and eventually called it back to our helicopter crew but they hadn't been aware of anybody else or gotten any distress calls. We eventually just left everything and moved camp. Everybody was pretty upset by it and a day or two later we ended the whole trip early because it seemed like nobody wanted to be out anymore. It was the weirdest thing I'd ever seen. First thought was bear attack, but there was food left uneaten, and I've seen bear attacks on camps before, but nothing like this. Bears rip open packs and go after food, and are generally pretty easy to scare away. What still sticks with me is why all their clothes and packs were still there with half being totally destroyed and half being untouched. I still don't get it. I've done a lot of other camping and hiking, rafting and biking, all around the country and I've never had any other weird experiences like that. Started lurking around Reddit a couple months ago and finally have a thread I wanted to join up to comment on. I come from a big country family. We live on a farm, we raise our own food and meat animals, and we hunt and process. My dad's first cousin is even a licensed taxidermist. So we get a lot of hunting in. For a bit more backstory, on the homestead I grew up on, and still live on, it was my parents, my pop's first cousin and his wife, me and my four sisters, and my four female second cousins. So four adults and nine kids. And sometimes my pop's brother comes to stay with us too, especially when hunting season is starting up. So hunting season, deer, is going on, and my pops, his brother, Uncle K, and the cousin we live with, Uncle V, are all getting ready to go hunting. Some of us kids decide to tag along, me, 12, my sister S, 15, and my cousin A, 14. We go out further into the woods than we normally do, set up camp, etc. Important fact, during the time we're setting up, my pops and uncles are being quiet, while the three of us kids talk. My voice hasn't changed. This is important. Us kids keep chattering away, while the adults are just letting us get our energy out while they check the survival equipment, make sure the guns are clean and working, etc. Strong silent southern types ha ha ha. 
There's a rustling in the thick brush around us, and suddenly three creepy looking guys enter the clearing. They stop dead. One of them has a hand on his knife on his belt. They are clearly drunk as fuck. They keep looking between A and S and my pops and uncles, like they're debating something. My pops and uncles stand up. Last bit of backstory, every dude in my family is fuck off huge. I'm 19 now, and I'm 6 feet 5 inches. My dad is the biggest at 6 apostrophe 10, 280. Just deeply intimidating man, and so are uncles V and K. The guys laugh nervously as my uncle V picks up one of the freshly cleaned rifles and points it at them. These dudes start running out the clearing like the devil was after them. My pops immediately says we're clearing out. My uncles don't even question it, and neither do us kids. We're freaking out, and we totally take things down sloppy but my pops doesn't say anything about us messing up his camping equipment. We get back into cell service and my dad calls the cops about seeing those fuckers but the cops don't seem to think it's serious since nothing happened. It's at that moment I realized, A, S, and me with my unchanged voice were the only ones these guys could hear talking. They thought they'd come across a camp of three girls by themselves. I don't want to even think about what would have happened if my dad and uncles hadn't been there. So and I were off-roading in the Cibola National Forest. On a few of the turns, there's a spot in the trees looking out, over a cliff. And one of these, we saw a weird thing in the air. I can't even really say it was in the sky, because it was too close. I could see the other parts of the mountain behind this thing. It did this weird thing, almost like a loading bar, lighting up white back to front, then vanished. I still don't know what that thing was. We both saw it. It had a wider back and went to a point at the front, and the front part curved down. It was terrifying the whole way out, because the road wasn't wide enough to turn around on and there were more openings in the trees like that ahead of us. No missing time, nothing weird like that, but it was a good minute before either of us said anything. I've been back since, took months before I was willing TBH, and never saw anything like it since. So, this happens in 2002. In Brazil me and my friends went camping in a forest in the Mantiqueira, similar to the Appalakes. We were in seven people and everyone brought a gun, pistols, rifles and machetes, not an R-15, in case we had to protect ourselves from bandits or something like this. We were pretending to stay four days in the woods. Our camping site was about one and a half hours from the main road. We made camp in the afternoon and when night came we lived a fire and drank and ate, lothed and everything that's good. Around 1 p.m. it started raining and it extinguished our fire, so we turned our very bad electric lights on when it started. First the cattle of a nearby farm started making a lot of noise. The birds woke up and started screaming like crazy. This went for around an hour. Then suddenly, it all stopped, full and mortal silence, all animals stopped making noise, at this point we were terrified, with our guns loaded we made a circle, all of us were in the military and one of us was in the BOPE, a special ops police, unkillable lads, then we heard movement near us, something was watching us from a near distance, we couldn't tell where because of the noise of the rain, to worse our situation, one of our electric lights went off, how cliche, I thought. We were in darkness surrounded by something in full silence, that's when we heard the scream, I can't even describe it, it was a very high pitched sound that lasted for a long time, about a minute, a lengthening fell in the woods and for seconds I saw it, a very tall, skinny thing with humanoid traits, it just wasn't human, very long arms and black eyes. We then packed up as fast as possible and then ran to the car and left. I didn't slept for a few nights after that incident. I love to share a story my uncle told. TLDR at the bottom. In 1992 he owned about 150 acres in a remote area of East Tennessee. On this land he had a large fishing pond and a stream running through it and he used to leave lines out at night to pull in big catfish. This pond was accessible by two small game trails through thick patches of woods and he would need to drive to the trail entrances from his house near the front of the property and walk about a half mile in with his gear and nothing but a headlamp for light. This was something he did pretty often and my uncle was a lover of the outdoors so this was business as usual for him. Vietnam vet as well. Anyway this particular night in July 1992, he went down to the pond at about 9.30 pm to check his lines. As he was doing so, he heard a loud splash and assumed it was a fish jumping. He carried on with what he was doing and then heard a low, guttural groan and what he described as monkeys flighting just on the other side of the pond, it was about 70 yards across. 
Multiple loud splashes occurred and he also heard a loud crash in the woods just yards away to his left. He talked about how he immediately felt a sense of panic and was attempting to get visuals using his headlamp but whatever was producing these sounds was behind tree cover. He said that the woods then erupted in continued sounds of fighting monkeys and he opted to drop his gear and run down the trail toward his truck. Apparently, even in his adrenaline-fueled state, he could hear footfall on his left as he was being hunted. He got to his truck and hauled ass out of there to the road and back to his home, which mind you, sits on the property about six miles away. He went inside and locked every window and door, grabbed a gun, and stayed up and vigilant the entire night but nothing more occurred. He called my dad the next day who sort of just laughed it off. Well, for my uncle whatever he experienced scared him so badly that he put his land up for sale and sold it a few months later. Until he died in 2017, he would maintain that he believes that he walked into a group of Sasquatch and they erupted in territorial displays to get him out of there. He never enjoyed the outdoors after that. This wasn't a man who I took for a liar. TLDR, my Vietnam vet slash outdoorsman uncle claims he was chased out of the woods by a clan of Sasquatch and it scared him so badly he sold the property. I was out hunting with my older brother and his best friend a few years back, want to say 2016. We had been walking along a trail for a good 5 kms at least. On one side of this trail is a decent drop and then a river and on the other side is a decent uphill section and a huge pine forest. It was about 1 am by this point and we were just sort of quietly talking to each other when a horrific noise split the air. We all froze and looked at each other with the expression on our faces doing all the work. What the fuck was that? We knew it came from up in the pine forest and where we are there aren't any big predators or really anything out there that we should be scared of. So we shouldered our rifles and headed up to find out exactly what made this sound. I wish we hadn't. We got to a clearing and the trees were thinning out and my brother flicked on his spotlight. Big bright fucker, excellent range. Way up ahead of us was the strangest looking figure I've seen. Like the general shape of a wolf but just. Off. It was just stopped on the edge of another tree line further up the hill looking right at us. Pacing side to side. My brother's friend and I had our rifles trained on it trying to get a good look. We couldn't count out the fact it was another hunter's dog that was lost so we, against my gut feeling, went up after it. As we went up after it it became increasingly obvious this thing was watching us very intently. The closer we got, more we realized this was definitely not a hunter's dog. It was big. Really big and just the way it moved and its entire demeanor was just so unsettling. We kept two rifles on it and one the opposite direction, slowly made our way back down and haven't been back there since. Don't really talk about it either as we still don't know what we saw and people usually jump to the bullshit conclusion because like I said before where we live there's not really any big predators. TL, DR went hunting, saw what I can only describe as some kind of werewolf looking fucker. I used to work as a fire spotter in a remote tower deep in the woods, on any given day I would be the only human being for miles around, TLDR at the bottom. For a couple of weeks every time it approached sunset when I'd finish for the day, everything would go eerily quiet, almost like clockwork, it stood out as it wasn't normal, there's usually more noise around that time of day, along with this every time I left the cabin to climb down there was the unnerving feeling of being watched, but for a while it was only while climbing down. After that I started getting the same feeling while on the ground, and it somehow felt much closer and more menacing, can only liken it to knowing you're being hunted slash stalked, not overly great when it's a 100 meter walk back to the car with nothing to put between you and whatever else might have been out there. This continued on for another few weeks, but started hearing sort of chirps and calls, they stood out as everything was dead quiet, then one day walking back across the clearing to the car there was a long, low guttural growling somewhere behind me, and I noped the fuck out as fast as I could, and afterwards started parking the car at the base of the ladder, because fuck walking on open ground with angry sounding probably bitey things lurking about. A few days later I was driving back out and spotted a movement on the upside of the road, looked again as it disappeared into the tree line, large, long and dark, it seemed to hang around until the end of the fire season as the quietness and eerie feelings were gone at the start of the next. TLDR, worked alone in forest in buttfuck nowhere, got stalked by large nope for a couple months. In my opinion, 
and I've lived in very rural areas my whole life, the majority of creepy night screams in N America can be blamed on cats, cougar, bobcat, foxes, and owls. The majority but not all. If you want to read just my scary experience skip to last paragraph. We live in a farm along a small feeder creek. In our area row crops, corn and soybeans, are the main crops so most land is cleared except along the creeks and rivers. This concentrates the wildlife. For 20 years foxes have made a den under our barn and some generations are tamer and nosier than others. Two summers ago they were so loud, making every scream and weird sound you can imagine we couldn't sleep with the windows open. We also have large numbers of barred owls, I got to see a batch learn to fly as both parents stood by, and these birds have an amazing vocabulary. When our young grandchildren visit in the summer months we usually put a tent in our backyard and my husband and I, camp, out there with them. The sounds you can hear on a night like that are truly amazing. One year we had foxes running past the tent about every 20 minutes making their weird strangled cry. When they got back to the den we'd hear growls, nips, barks, yelps and all manner of noise as the young ones played and fought. The barred owls do the who cooks for you who cooks for you all, call often during the day. But at certain times of the year groups of them start in at dusk with what I call, monkey calls. It's quite chilling the first time you hear it. I can't describe it just imagine a bunch of monkeys doing their typical monkey chatter and you have it. Screech owls, especially if near your home, and I once had one perch on my chimney, are another level and sound like the devil is screaming. All this said I've heard a scream 25 years ago in South Missouri that had to come from such a large chest it truly frightened and confused me. My husband also heard it and to this day has no idea what it was. We were camping at Miramax State Park. It was deep and long and induced terror in your heart. Whatever it was it was above the campground close to the river. We both sat straight up in our sleeping bags looking at each other and said, WTF was that? I was raised in those hills, never heard it before or since. This happened one or two years ago to me and my stepdad. We were in Colorado on an elk hunting trip and we had been hiking all day when we got to a place that we would make camp. We are there for a few hours and nothing really happens we scout a little and don't come up with much. This was our second ever elk hunt so we did really know what to look for. We cooked a dinner of Mountain House freeze-dried beef stew, on our gas stove. After we finish up we both sit and catch our breath you see me and my stepdad are from Texas and at 11,000 feet our lungs aren't holding up to the thinner air, we sit there for a while and break out our bivvies, not 100% on the spelling of that, which is basically a thicker trash bag made or reflective material and is waterproof. We shove our sleeping bags in and settle in. We were both pretty tired but we were slightly worried about bears because I have bear spray, my dad has his 9mm Glock and my dad's bow which is attached to his bag. We have our food bag in a tree out of reach of a bear so we have done all the things we need to make our camp bear proof. We fall asleep and I have feces weird, fucked up dreams. I hear people talking about how they hope it doesn't rain, then I hear them talking about the best way to put a fire together. And finally I just hear a fire going. I wake up to the feeling of a fat train drop hitting me in the face. I then feel where the raindrop had hit me and it was dry. I look around and there is no fire and not evidence of any people, no nothing really. This scared the shit out of me and I sit there for a few hours, waiting for it to get light. When it finally does get light my stepdad starts to wake and I'm sitting there still shivering even though it is only in the high 40s and I'm wrapped in a jacket the sleeping bag and many other layers. He turns to me and says dude we need to leave. I say why? And my dad says I had all sorts of fucked up dreams, he proceeds to explain to me that in the middle of the night he had heard what he thought was a bear, then what he thought was me screaming in the middle of the night, me getting dragged away. And then finally what he thought was a bear just standing over him and he had not been able to sleep much due to the fact that he thought his son was getting eaten by a bear. I then explained to him what I thought I heard and the raindrop and we both agreed that we should leave and that maybe that the altitude was messing with us. To this day I don't know if it was altitude because I heard those voices and I still remember that conversation vividly. 
We have dense woods behind my house, and one evening I hear my dog barking up a storm. I ran outside to see what it was, and near our grapevine stood this wolf-like creature that was about the size of a huge bear. I freaked out when it made eye contact with me. It just stood there, about 10 yards away from me, just staring. I grabbed my dog and ran inside to tell my parents. They wrote it off as my imagination since I was about 10 to 12 at the time, but ever since then when I go into the woods it feels like I'm being watched. I'm now 17, and still have the vivid memory of it. My father used to be an avid hunter when he was in his 20s, before family life and all, he's hunted all around the state we live in and does not scare easily. At the time he was working on a farm that is just a couple miles away from where we live now. The farmer knew my grandparents and trusted my father. The farmer owned a ton of land, which included quite a bit of woods. He told my dad he could hunt them whenever he wanted. My father didn't waste any time in doing so. He went hunting a few weeks later, but something was off. He told us that when he went into the woods there wasn't any noise, no bugs or tree frogs. It creeped him out, but he just played it off as an off day. He didn't any deer that day and left after a couple hours. My father went back the second time a few weeks later since he finally had a day off from the farm. This time was a bit stranger. He got a 100 or so yards into the woods and it was the same as before no noise of any sort. Except this time he said it felt as he was being stalked. He said he stayed in the woods for 15 to 20 minutes before quickly leaving. My dad never went back into those woods. He said in his entire life up until now he never felt like that again. This farmer was going to give his farm to my dad, but he refused because of how uneasy those woods made him feel. This happened back in the 70s and the woods currently have a reputation of being haunted with Bigfoot sightings and even screams at night. There's a website for my state that lists forgotten and historical places and has a section that shows legends and haunted places by county and the woods are listed there as a supposedly haunted location. I'm a landscaper and we manage some pretty big accounts in the woods. Well I stepped off a hundred feet or so to take a leak. I started peeing and looked up and around and off in the distance I see someone in a red hoodie just fck and staring at me from behind a tree. This lot of land is next to a road but it's all commercial and not residential so besides us there really shouldn't be any other people out here but us. Especially this deep out there. I cocked my head to the side to make sure that it was in fact a person in a hoodie and not something else my mind distorted into a human. Well once I move they move back behind the tree. I yelled at them hey what are you doing and they took off. I'm pretty sure whoever it was did not have pants on. They could have been flesh colored but I don't believe so. And no shoes. I was shook by the all things so I just called my boss man and told him what's up. We all went to do a quick search together and we never saw the person again. Hiking part of the NCT north of Grand Rapids, Michigan. We hiked around 25 miles in a day and by the time we made camp I was in a huge amount of pain, hadn't hiked for almost a year so going that hard was a mistake. I was starting to get sick and couldn't get warm no matter how I layered up. I barely ate and then went to sleep. I woke up in the very early morning to slow footsteps walking around camp. They were pretty heavy and lumbering so I knew it was a bear. I didn't dare move and tried to slow my breathing as much as possible to stay quiet. After around 20 minutes it started moving away again and I passed back out. When I woke up the shrubbery around camp was disturbed and a friend had also woken up and heard the same thing. She was somewhat new to hiking though and had no idea what it was so she was a little spooked when I told her. We got the fuck out of there as soon as we could. Not scary but can't explain it to this day and I've wanted to share it for a while and have no one that I think would take it seriously. TL, doctor at the bottom wildland firefighter in the US. I've fought fires all over the Northwest, Eastern Rockies, and Midwest forests and the only thing that's ever thrown me off was fighting fires in the mountains of New Wyoming, BLM land east of Yellowstone. Hiking into a recently burnt valley that was, just, eerie, smoke can make that a norm but the colors were so vibrant, even after being touched by fire, most of the trees and shrubs were unburnt, uncommon but not rare or impossible, within a few steps of entering the base of the valley I knew the details like I had lived there all my life, like deja vu but with the clarity of reality, and not a momentary second but 20 minutes and a hundred yards of hiking. To be clear this was a place I'd never been before and I was hiking paths that were as familiar to me as a brother. Trees I knew had scars opposite of me 20 yards away, stones that I knew were going to be warm, almost hot to the touch, perched inches from an ice-cold stream. 
Before I turned corners I knew about a rock shelf that was protecting a small pool with a lush green patch of grass the size of a small room with small untouched trees, green grass in Wyoming in August, fairly uncommon, I stayed there for a moment that felt like an hour. The whole time my hairs were standing up and falling down like I was revisiting a favorite song and the symphony of emotions like nostalgia, joy and bliss just washing over me. Everything just felt perfect. Every. Single. Detail. Perfect. Ike put Star Trek fans out there basically have wine and describe the nexus in Star Trek 7, Generations, like being inside joy, and never in my entire life have I ever been as content, finished scouting the valley, went back to my crew and we moved on. I kept it to myself not knowing how to explain this perfect place to anyone let alone myself, this shook me for days, I had no way to rationalize it and it kept me awake a few nights for the rest of that assignment. Even as we worked, ate, shared fun stories it still gnawed at me. To this day, four years and countless fires fought later, I've never had an experience like it and likely the only place I've desired beyond any to return to again just to touch that perfect world. TL, doctor while fighting fires I found a doorway to the Nexus slash ribbon. Stayed for a short bit, and afterwards I've always wanted to go back, Morty voice. Everything's crooked, reality is poison, I want to go back. Lambs to the cosmic slaughter. I have experienced what you are describing. Now I have been to places in real life that I dreamed of before and what not, but I had something that is kind of like what you are describing, that was completely different and out of this world. More than any normal type of deja vu or having a dream and then experiencing it in real life, later. So one time my ex-boyfriend and I went on a vacation for a week to Cancun, Mexico. We had a package that let us choose between two different bonus type of things like SeaWorld, or going to see ruins etc. One of the things we could choose to do was going to Chichen Itza Mayan Pyramids which is about a four or five hour drive away from Cancun, into another state, out of Quintana Roo, and over mountains and into very dense and sparsely populated jungle. Now this is not a place I had dreamed of or anything else. But the night before we went, I couldn't even sleep because I was just so excited to go to these pyramids, ruins. When my ex-boyfriend and I got there finally and stepped off of the tour bus, the moment I stepped out, I could hear whispering. 360 degrees around us, way back in the jungle. Like I could literally hear hundreds of people talking, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. There was another woman in the group who also could hear it. It was really weird and I've only heard that one other time in my life, and that was at the Oregon Vortex. Anyways, something just overcame me while I was there. I somehow knew the entire layout. The entire city. Where everything was. What every building was used for. I was leading my ex-boyfriend around, and without any type of map, or anything. Just saying, okay, and if we walk down here, this is where this used to be. And over here, you will find this building, which is now called this and that. Or here's where people would eat and meet like a plaza, to hang out or whatever. It was really insane. I was crying when it was time to leave. I knew that place. I knew it. Intimately. How? It was just really weird. How could I have known everything that I did? Geographically and physically, historically, etc. It was just really something else. It was really tripping him out, too. Past life. Something else. I have no idea. There's more to this. But I'll stop for now. As a kid, I lived by a decent-sized conservation area in southern New Hampshire. Me and my friend from the neighboring town would go there during hunting season, because you weren't allowed to hunt on it, unlike the forests he and I usually hung around. The area spanned a river, and there were a lot of little islands and sandbars that only appeared during parts of the year thanks to snow melt. So we ford the river, and ended up on a peninsula not that far off the trail, maybe a quarter mile at most, but across water. You'd have to swim to it most of the year. So we're checking it out, climbing the embankment and what have you, and then we both spot a camp at the same time. It was set up in the middle of this peninsula, just hidden well enough that you couldn't see it if you went boating. The damn thing had bones all over. It looked like your typical homeless camp, with some garbage, a shopping cart of all things, and a tarp tent with a really grimy pile of blankets, but what stuck out was the bones. Hanging from branches on strings, strewn around a fire pit, just generally littered about. I'm pretty sure they were deer and other animal bones, but I don't know because once we both saw that, 
my friend wasn't listening to my dumbass self who wanted to check it out anymore and fucked right off, and I followed. Never saw a person, never saw a boat, nothing. Just the camp and the bones. It's worth noting that the enforcement of conservation there is strict enough that you can get in major trouble if they even suspect you're there to hunt or fish without permission, and they're really vigilant about it. We also later realized that you could lay on the embankment we climbed up and watch people on the more popular trails without even needing binoculars, and there was a pretty good view of the river as well. Whoever lived there could watch people and not get seen. Friend and I agree, his gut instincts were right. It's very probable the camp's owner was there, watching us from hiding. I shudder to think what would have happened if we got closer. Me and a group of friends were camping in a clearing just outside a large woods, we got there around noon and fished and hiked until sunset. Everything was normal, we made a fire and were cooking our fish and telling stories and once it got so dark you couldn't see past the light of the fire things got a bit scarier. We heard the very loud yelp, we thought it sounded like a wolf, so we decided to throw whatever fish we had left back into the creek to try to get the wolf to leave. We still on high alert but we sat back down and continued our stories, a bit later we hear the yelp again followed by a loud screeching noise, I've never heard anything like it before. After that we put more wood on the fire and went back to our tents, we hoped the light would keep whatever was in that woods away. In the morning we started to pack up and noticed some of the fish that we threw in the creek was laying next to our fire, I have no idea what did that but we decided it was best if we didn't come back to that spot anymore. TL, DR at bottom. I've got one. When I was in Boy Scouts, my troop would always go to a camp called Camp Tokwitz for our yearly summer camp. That specific year, they had had abnormal bear activity in and around the camp. It was a pretty sizable camp but was still way out in the boonas, so an encounter with a chipmunk was just as common as it would be with a California black bear. Wildlife management was done by some crazy old gunnery sergeant that we called Gunny, so you can see the situations you might find yourself in. So anyway, I was tenting with my friend who had just joined the troop, let's call him James. So James and I are sleeping in our tent in the middle of the night, probably around 1 or 2 in the morning, when I was abruptly awoken by something. Everything is dead silent aside from a plasticky creaking sound. Then I see it, right above my head. Something was pushing the tent in so hard that it began to cave in right above my head, like if someone was leaning into it with all of their weight. Except, these tents were relatively strong, you, I mean, I could as a preteen, could jump on them and you would just bounce right off. So, being the scared little 13 year old that I was, I began to smack whatever it was with all of my might whilst simultaneously clubbing James with my fist to get him to wake up. Mind you, James is an incredibly deep sleeper, so this in effect does nothing. Whoever or whatever it is is leaning so hard that it is almost touching my head when James wakes up from the nightmare that he was having and let out a blood curdling 10 year old girl being murdered in the woods type scream. Whatever it was stopped leaning on the tent and vanished silently into the night. So, for a few years, James, who has no recollection of the event whatsoever, and I always assumed it was a bear after the meds in my day pack. But, after staffing at the camp and getting to know the lore of the grounds a little better, I think something else might have been afoot. There have been many strange happenings in and around Camp Tokwitz, both paranormal and just normally unexplained. There's the usual Bigfoot and ghost stories, but older scouts and even administrative higher UPS claim to have seen things. Claims of Wendigo Skinwalker hybrids, things that look like both, not actual hybrids, some dead guy called Drag Thump, and a bunch of Native American myths, Tokwitz has the biggest and most active Native American program west of Oklahoma. The fact that there were no tears in the tent flap from the bear claws, we were the furthest away from the bear box, the fact that there was absolutely no sound from the supposed bear, black bears make a heck of a ruckus, and the fact that it was just persistently leaning into the tent instead of just clawing at it like most bears leads me to believe that it was no yogi or smoky. It just didn't behave like bears do, and even if it was some older scouts attempting to play a joke on us, they wouldn't have been heavy enough to lean that far in on the tent and probably would have erupted into laughter right afterward. Plus, my troop isn't like that. It's full of a bunch of mild-mannered city boys, perfect eagle scout material, of which I am one. Everything just seems so off. I don't claim to know what it was, hence the unexplained part. Let me guys know if something similar happened to you. 
TL, DR, strange thing attempted to break into my tent in the night, thought it was a bear, but I don't think so anymore. Edit, I didn't know that my grammar was that bad, sorry. But seriously, Reddit's autocorrect is really bad. A couple years ago while hunting I went out before first light and climbed into my deer stand like I've done countless times. Right at about 5 am. My favorite part of the day is when the light starts to break into the sky and the forest wakes up. The nocturnal creatures retreat and the day creatures stir and become active. That morning, as the light started to appear, nothing happened. And I mean nothing. No rabbits or raccoons retreating to a den, no squirrels searching for breakfast, no deer, no hogs, not even a single bird. The weather slash temperature was unremarkable and the air was mostly still. There was just no movement and no sound throughout the woods that morning. Not a chirp nor a rustle. As time passed I started to get an unexplainable sense of dread. Not a this is weird feeling of observing something strange but more of a death is imminent feeling that I've never experienced before. I stayed until about 8 am, still early for deer hunting, until I was literally trembling with fear and I stormed out of there. I went back that afternoon and I found the woods to be completely normal with all the usual sights and sounds. Weirdest and most uncomfortable experience in the woods that I've ever had. Almost like a dream but I absolutely was not dreaming. I have not been scared in the woods since I was a boy going out the first few times with my dad. He would joke, we're hunting. We have nothing to fear. The forest is afraid of us. Not that morning, dad. I was scared shitless and I don't know why. I was 45 years old at the time. Two stories, first was the year I met my wife, 10 years ago, we were 17 and I was a hunting nut. Decided to go camping in the sand dunes behind my suburb, just off the beach. We live in rural West AUs, so nothing happens. Anyway, pretty local area, lots of people around, we decided to just hang around the beach, go walking and settle down for the night. A few hours passed and we had a small campfire going, jumped into our shared sleeping bag and went to sleep. Woke up to thudding all around us and a huge grok 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 noise. Okay, it freaked us out because I was half asleep. It was an emu that basically stood on us and honestly the big fella was as shocked as we were and he took off. So we settled to sleep and hear it. People everywhere. They walked past us, we didn't see them though. They weren't talking, we could just hear them walking. They broke into a run and started laughing. We heard them run over the dune to the seaside, and then the chanting started. People weren't taking the piss, they were chasing someone and loving it. There were a group of people running up and down the trails around us, with a group chanting. At that stage we knocked the fuck out. Called my partner's parents and they came with their Rottweiler and gun to pick us up. We walked back to the parking lot that lead to the trails with our fog snarling at everything. We could hear people running out of the darkness behind us laughing at us, some of them even taunted us to come back to the dunes. Never figured out what it was about, but it wasn't the local aboriginal people, my wife's extended family, and it wasn't the local meth heads, but it was over 50 people at around 3 am. A second tale. We were homeless for a while at around 20. We rescued mastiffs and I had an opportunity to train in Melbourne and represent a gym for MMA. We drove across the Nullarbor with our three dogs and my wife's mother. Halfway across we got tired and saw a dilapidated roadside stop. It was just some younger woman's house with a shop attached. We pulled up and talked to the female owner and an older bloke. They looked at us and asked if we were tired. I said yeah and they asked us if we wanted to park around back. Sure, stop for a rest cause these folks seemed nice. Drove around the back to a car park equivalent of car bodies. Okay sure, that's odd already, because you know. The nearest town is a day's drive. Anyway, one of our dogs was unwell and needed a strict diet and to poop regularly. I get her out of the car and the other dogs jump out too. A Rottweiler takes off to explore. The dogs poop and I call our big girl back. No response. That's pretty normal she was ignorant sometimes. I go to look for her and she is sniffing a sleeping bag. Okay fine, the place is a wreck with shit everywhere. I didn't give it a second thought. Then I looked up and saw a massive tarp wrapped up around, something, and it is strung up between a few trees. Completely suspended. And behind it a few sleeping bags suspended between some trees. About ten in all including the big one. Then I noticed the absolute swarm of flies. Got the dogs back in the car and left. Saw the woman and old bloke on the way out. Waved at him and acted natural. Nothing. No smile or wave, all former charm was gone. We dodged some Ivan Malar level shit because my dog was picky about where she pooped. Never reported this because we honestly have no idea where on the Nullarbor it was. We just kept heading east on the biggest road we could. I am sure as day we were going to be killed by some hillbilly motherfuckers. Our old house had a forest boarding our backyard. I would get up at 4.30 every morning for work. 
On this particular morning my wife was already up, staring out the window at the woods. Tells me to look there's something lighting it up. I'm still half asleep, so I just glanced out. It's lit up almost like daylight, and tell her it's the moon, and go get in the shower. Come out when I'm done, a bit more awake now, and she points out the window, it's the moon? Then where did it go? I look back out and the forest is its normal dark. I then realize how stupid my first assumption was, the forest is north of the house, the moon would never rise over it. Could have been a spotlight. But, then it'd be the brightest spotlight I've ever seen, in the middle of the woods, for no reason. It wasn't really a scary experience. When I was around 17 years old I had a dog that was part Alaskan Husky and part German Shepherd. I lived in a rural section of the Appalachian Mountains at the time and would go hiking pretty often. My dog, I'll call him Bugs because that was his name, would always go with me. As you can imagine, Bugs was a pretty good sized dog given the two breeds he was mixed from. He didn't scare too easily and was very protective. We were on one of our usual hikes. We'd go up the hill behind my parents' house to an old coal mining road. There were a couple cold water springs near the road and once we got within a hundred feet or so of them Bugs would run ahead to get him a drink and cool off a bit. So he took off, and because of the trees and brush of the forest I couldn't see him. I knew where he'd be. I stopped at that time to get a drink from my water bottle and rest a couple seconds. Not long after I start moving again I hear Bugs running back down the hill. I figure he's just coming to see where I'm at. Instead he is running full force at me with a bit of a panic look on his face. He stops, looks at me, says woof and takes off running full force down the hill again. I think that was odd, but continue on my hike. Hoping to see what may have spooked him. There wasn't much wildlife to be feared at the time. Just some squirrels, chipmunks, white-tailed deer, opossums, skunks, birds, and the usual critters. The scariest thing might be a bobcat, but those are rarely sighted. I finish my hike not seeing anything scary. I get home and Bugs is just hanging out in the yard waiting for me. He didn't go on the next couple of hikes with me, but he did eventually rejoin me on the trips. I still don't know what spooked him. It was a strange experience, but not particularly scary, for me anyway. If Bugs were still alive he may tell a different story. In case you're curious, Bugs died at the old age of 18. He was definitely a good boy. I was camping with my church youth group when I was about 12 to 13, I'm 23 now. At night we would split up into three or four and tent together. First night there, I could not sleep. My tent mates were heavy asleep, but for some unexplainable reason, I had a really uneasy feeling that kept me awake. I passed most of my time just laying and looking through our mesh window in the tent. There was only one window that faced the gravel road and about 15 yards down the road was the camp's restroom. Next to the restroom was one single street light. This is all I could see through our window. Nothing but woods around the tent other than that. Early, around 1 or 2 am, a dull, hovering light caught my attention. At first I thought it was a headlamp because that seemed around the same height that I was seeing this light. The light slowly moved from the restroom area to directly underneath the streetlight. That's when I realized that no human was holding the light. The orb of light continued to slowly move, and I followed it with my eyes until it reached the tree line and disappeared behind the trees. I believed no one else had seen it until I told my younger brother the next morning, also happened to be on that trip. He said that he was awake all night and had seen the exact same thing. I've told this before, but for those who haven't heard my yarn, I distance hike when I can. Sometimes this means getting up early, or staying out late, to get as many miles in as possible. Sometimes, walking in the pitch dark with a low light headlamp gets spooky. I grew up in the woods of this area. I've slept under our canopy of stars more nights than I can count. I've trekked thousands of miles of trail river bank, lake shore, ridge, bottoms, bogs, and creeks. I've hunted the game. I'm establishing this because it's important you understand I've heard, seen, and smelt about all this region has to offer in the way of wilderness. My scariest experience though happened at about 0430 in the morning. It was late spring, so the first morning light wouldn't be visible in the treetops for another 30 to 45 minutes, another hour passed that until sunrise. I was on mile 5. I'm in a low bottom that's wedged between two steep ridges. The trail I'm on was narrow, muddy, and completely hemmed in by thick underbrush, young maple, and old oak growth. I'm focused on the small light from my headlamp, just one step after the other, zoned out. 
Then I heard a loud crack. And I froze solid. This is the part I have trouble describing. 0430 in springtime means I'm the only thing making noise. No birds chirping, nothing. Dead quiet. Midstep I froze. When fight or flight kicks in you have these immediate instinct thoughts. The thought that instantly flashed in my mind as I stood there balancing myself into silence was, if I hear that again, I'm turning around, and I'm going back the way I came in a hurry. Why? Because that sound was not a branch breaking. It wasn't dead Phil. It wasn't a widow maker. I was damn sure I had just heard something intentional. Hearing it twice, well, that meant get out of here. To describe it as best I can, it sounded like a decent sized wooden stick being violently whacked against a smallish tree. More a fungo bat sized stick, than a baseball bat. The distinction in my head being that this sound was a crack, and not a thud or thump. And I have described it as, explosive, in the past because it was so sudden, and so terribly loud. I had the sense that it was about 50 yards directly in front of me, and it was loud, and clear. Now, as I stood there, completely spooked, I realized the soon to be worst part of my situation. I knew where the sound came from. And I knew where the trail went. In about 30 yards, I was going to come to a 180 degree turn and start up the ridge going away from the creek. This meant, as soon as I got the courage to move towards this noise, I was going to have to turn my back to it, and get up that ridge. This made me very nervous. My head somewhere between meth fiend murder, and Bigfoot bludgeoning. Minutes pass. I just breathe my foggy breath into my glasses, and listen. Nothing. Dead quiet. I've got about 20 to 30 minutes until first light. I crank up the headlamp, and start to slowly creep to the 180 turn. When you wear a headlamp in the woods at night, every tree branch in front of you casts a big black moving shadow on the trail. It didn't help. I get to the turn, and quickly make the bend. I'm moving pretty fast at this point. Trying to be quiet. Taking tiny, shallow breaths so I can listen while humping it up the trail. And then I smell it. A stench hits me that I can't describe. I just imagined wet, rotten, death. I've actually worked scenes where humans have expired in a past life as a firefighter. This was like days old decomposition, but it just smelled, strange. I kept walking fast. By the time I made the top of that ridge, I was huffing, and the first light was showing. I didn't stop moving until full light was out, and the birds were chirping. I've heard it all in our woods. I've smelled it all. I'm telling you, I don't know what the hell that was. Dead Phil, and especially leafed out branches make a lot of noise on the way down. I've heard it many times. I don't know. Absolute silence. It kind of freaked me out. I was on a short day hike by myself. I was walking down a trail near a stand of pine trees and came around a bend on the trail and all of a sudden everything got really quiet. No wind. No birds chirping. No rustling leaves. Only the sounds of my own footsteps and breathing. I kept hiking, but it gave me chills. I've since been back there and the wood seemed alive again. So this will most likely get buried but whatever. I was up at Montezuma's castle, Montezuma's well, and Tuzagut in AZ for an internship with the NPS. Most of the job was trail maintenance and destroying of invasive plants. So lots of time outside pretty much in the middle of nowhere. Many a time when I'd be out of here what sounded like hoofbeats of horses but never saw any. The hoofbeats would get really close, within a few feet and there were times I could feel the vibration. One day I was out with one of the rangers and I started hearing it. I asked him if he heard it and he said he did and that it happened a lot. I started to ask questions when he held up his hand and told me to just accept that it was happening and to not ask questions. He seemed frightened of the sound too. I've heard it at home too in Phoenix. At my apartment complex there is a nice green belt area and one morning I was on the early shift for work. It's pitch black outside. I was walking to my car when I heard the hoofbeats. It sounded like a horse charging at me. I whipped around expecting a giant dog that was running across the green belt but there was nothing. The hoofbeats continued until they got to where I was and just stopped. I have never found anything on the internet about it, much to my dismay. I don't know that I would really call it paranormal. But I definitely can't find an explanation. The only two things I can think of is one, the ground moving and it causes the hoofbeat sounds. 2. Gas escaping from underground. I'll probably never know.
went for a drive in the woods in southeast Alaska a few decades ago. It was my best friend driving, my fiancé riding center seat, and me in the passenger seat of a single cab pickup. We stopped at a gas station to get snacks before heading out. It was late in the evening so it was already dark out by the time we stopped to eat some of our snacks. The night was cool as it was late fall. So here we are chatting in the truck and eating our food parked off of this long winding dirt road to nowhere. My buddy starts taking about local legends and lore including the Kush Taka. I was fairly ignorant to the idea and myth and thought it was all BS. I thought it would be funny to harass him a bit about it and push the limits of testing this Kush Taka nonsense. He was dead serious when he told me to stop. But I continued. Then I heard what sounded exactly like fingernails tapping on my window next to my head. I looked over and seen nothing but assumed I was hearing things. I couldn't see anything because the cab light was on it was pitch black out. A few moments pass and I hear it again. This time both my finance and friend heard it. My friend sorta of nervously smiled and laughed. Then I realized I had to pee. So I jokingly tell them if I get snatched up by this Kush Taka you best come after me. I open the door and pee by the front passenger tire. But the area felt very weird and uncomfortable. I mentioned that as I got back in. There we talked a bit more and I realized we had pulled off unknowingly, at the time we stopped, near a very old small cemetery that contained frog-type headstones of the Tlingit and Haida culture in an area amongst large southeast evergreen trees. I still not being a believer and love flipping shit to my friend then started yeah well if this Kush Taka BS is real why don't they make themselves known? Come on. Come on already. No sooner had I said that than something punched or hit the front fender twice. My buddy turned ghost white and in one motion started the truck up and threw it in drive and we were fucking gone. We got off the dirt road and back onto asphalt really quickly and stopped under a street light. We got out and looked. Sure enough, you could clearly see where something had hit, up high, the front right fender when we were parked. Two distinct marks of dirt missing. To this day, I still don't know what it was, but with every other paranormal experience I've had since that time, there's no doubt in my mind that something was trying to tell me to stop pushing it or something bad would happen. Never again did I talk shit about the Kush Taka being BS. And I'll never go into the woods of Southeast AK alone, ever. One time on a hunting trip we were in a tree stand when across the clearing we see someone standing just in the middle of the field we grabbed a scope to see what they were doing my buddy looked at me and said it was a kid we were in shock that a kid would be out in the middle of the Montana woods in winter so we climbed down and started heading towards him. Well as soon as we got about 100 yards away the kid giggled and took off running the other way I yelled and started sprinting towards my bud right behind me but no matter how fast we ran we couldn't catch him when we started getting into thick bush we lost track of him and couldn't find a trace of him all we kept hearing was his childlike giggle. That's when my buddy just turned and said we should go something ain't right. We got back to the tree stand and never saw him again. We stopped off and pray and asked some people if any kids were missing cause we saw a little boy in the woods but he ran from us, they said no one was missing from there. It was the closet town to us so who knows. Background about where my deer stand is. To my back is woods, then field, to my front is a field that turns into a hill that I chose to kind of act as a berm in case I miss, to the left is more woods, right is more field. This area is my family's farm and has been for a long time. Before that it was not really a forest, but slight wooded, the trees were planted by settlers, before that it was a clear area. I'm not a superstitious person, but it says can't explain and I can't. I was sitting in my stand on a Saturday morning. I will never forget this, it was raining barely, sun just above the horizon. Suddenly I felt like I was being watched, I've never felt like that with deer. I looked into the woods and there were wolves on the edge of the woods, neat. Those dicks just stood there and watched me, you better bet I stared back. I know they take that as a challenge, but I'm in a tree, bring it. The wolves they just stood there, staring, watching. They stood there for three hours. I just started ignoring them, they scared away the deer anyways. All of the sudden they leave, double time and some big, black thing appears from the woods. Size of a black bear, skinny like a dog, head like a bat. It stood where the wolves were. I pointed my gun at it and shot into the ground, on purpose, I don't want to be the guy who killed the last of whatever species. It looked at me, 
I chambered a new round, it ran. I have no idea what it was, but I asked my dad and uncles and they said they saw it too. I was maybe 16 at the time and was out deer hunting. I was a mile walk from home hunting in a valley and sitting on the top of a ridge on the one side overlooking a river bed and the sun was going down. I should have left earlier but didn't want to scare the deer and figured I'd wait till they left or it was dark enough they wouldn't see me leave. When I did leave it was still light enough to somewhat see but too dark to look through my rifle scope if that makes sense. I climbed over the top of the ridge and when I did I could hear something across the dried up pond at the bottom of this side. I then seen five animals. Don't know what they were they were but they weren't canines like wolves or coyotes. They were bigger than coyotes and a lot more bulky but were super agile. They were making weird sounds I'd never heard before too. I don't know if they seen or smelled but all of a sudden they all stopped moving and went silent for a few seconds before two of them took off running and started looping around to my left and going behind me and one looped to my right while the other two stayed where they were. I had become the hunted and I was terrified. I started shouting and making a lot of noise and I'd never seen them for the rest of the walk home but it was the scariest moment I've ever had in the woods. We went back the next day to look for tracks but it had snowed enough that night to cover them. I won't forget that night. I was hiking with my family in a small nature reserve near here. All of a sudden we hear large crashing and branch snapping sounds. We turn behind us and see taking off from the cliff the biggest bird I have ever seen. But things about it looked off, like the legs and length of the body. Not to mention it had a really long neck and a strange shaped head. I'll never be sure what that was. We weren't in an area known for large birds. The biggest we get here in NJ are like hawks. This thing looked like it had a 40 plus foot wingspan, and was bigger than any hawk I've ever seen. Not mine, but my mom's and cousin. My mom swears there is a werewolf creature around the Camp Douglas, Fort McCoy area of Wisconsin. In the late 90s, mom and boyfriend were driving on the frontage road alongside the interstate between Toma and Sparta. It was a full moon night in the fall. I call it a frontage road but it's sometimes visible to the interstate and other times not because of trees. What they think is a exceptionally large man runs out of the trees on all fours and leaps over the chain link and barbed wire fence around some military area. This fenced in area has a stone entrance wall with a sign stating what it's for and the army installation it belongs to. The thing has ears you like a human, more like a dog and leaps over the chain link barbed wire fence and disappears into more woods. They don't stop, but freak out asking the others in the car if they saw whatever it was. About five years later, my dad's cousin, didn't know my mom, broken family reasons, is talking to me about how he and his GF were on that frontage road driving out to look at a home they wanted to buy. It was dusk in winter. They come close to this stone entrance thing, and something is on top of it. They slowed and looked at it. They said it was a werewolf sitting on its haunches on the stone wall, and it looks right at them. Its ears move back like a dog's do when it's thinking about taking off after something. His wife screams and he floors it away. They never stopped to see the house, just made it back onto the interstate. What gets me is the two sightings happened years apart, and at least six total adults saw it. Some of them I think would just love to say they saw something like this, but not all of them are this fanciful. Nevertheless, when I had to go to Fort McCoy to get my CAC and the group of us from my employer got lost on the way in this wooded area, I couldn't help but look into the woods just in case I saw it. Was camping on a lake once with some friends and family up north, far enough north that there was zero light pollution from any sort of city or town. Far enough north you could see the aurora on occasion. We would often see moving lights in the sky, they looked like stars and our friends would explain it away as satellites but they would zip back and forth across the sky, changing directions abruptly, crossing paths, sometimes up to five of them in one area. But that's not what this story is about. We were sitting on the lake shore late one night gathered around the campfire when suddenly this bright orange ball of fire starts rising from the lake. We thought it might be a firework set off by someone else in the area but it rose incredibly slowly. And it wasn't an ember from the fire. We were all standing on the shore with our backs to the fire at this point. It rose, I'd cow high in the air, stopped and hovered for a few seconds, and then it was gone. We never really talked about it with them because of their dismissal of the other strange thing. I wish I could ask them about it now but I have since lost contact with all but one of them who is currently an oceanographer stationed in Antarctica. My buddy and I were driving to the casino once and we both thought we saw this gremlin elf thing. 
We were driving up a hill in Minnesota going to Treasure Island in Red Wing from Winona. Well right in front of a guardrail this thing kinda took a step onto the road into our headlights, about 1.5 minus 2, tall. And then kinda, oh shit, jumped back out of our headlights into the darkness. Now, I think I'm crazy and just caught a glimpse of something else that my mind is tricking me. But I look over to my buddy driving and his eyes are wide as hell, did you see that thing? He says, I don't really think it was one but strange how both of us think the same thing and we still talk about it at times. Hunting alone in the middle of the Oregon Cascades, miles from many people, I'm sitting still watching a clearing when I hear a sound that I've never heard before or since. Only way I can describe it is that it sounded like wood cracking together, like someone hit a pine tree with a telephone pole and was doing their best Jose Conseco impression. The first time it happened I genuinely thought it was a gunshot because the initial crack was so loud but the last half of the sound was very clearly a tree being struck and shaking. There was a flood of instant terror once my mind worked out the calculation for how hard you would have to hit a tree to replicate the sound. I'd estimate the source was on the other side of a small valley from me well over 300 yards. I know it sounds stupid but it was such a tremendous show of force I instantly started making my way back to my truck. I've been hunting all my life and I'm an avid firearm enthusiast I go shooting almost every weekend. This was 100% not gunfire. Pine trees and cedar trees will also sometimes make poping sound in the morning and into the afternoon as the sun warms them. It was orders of magnitude louder than that. So I live in quite a remote area and I never really believed in ghosts or monsters. I was driving along at night and decided to pull up for the night and continue driving the next day at a spot known as the Flat Sands. It's literally just a flat land that spans for 100 seconds of KMS. I was sleeping and I woke up to the most intense feeling of someone pinning me down and unable to move. I couldn't see anything but it lasted a good minute. I was sweating and out of breath and had to take a moment to process WTF just happened. I ended up going back to sleep and drove home the next day. Fast forward a few weeks later in my own home the same shit happened. Later on I was chatting to a few locals and another fella who had stayed at the same sand flat started talking about how he refuses to sleep there anymore as he has been there twice and both times he's had the same experience. On top of that the local inmates at the prison I'm at started to make complaints that they believe the Featherfoot man is about as they all experienced being pushed down in their sleep. It's some wacky shit. Edit, Featherfoot man is a local myth of a bad spirit who kill people. I was about 16 when this happened. I was in Brawley, California for dove season with my cousins, dad, and grandpa. I was sitting at our campfire with my cousins when I kept hearing scratching noises and shuffling coming from a nearby cluster of trees. I told my cousins to stay put and I took my shotgun to investigate, thinking it was coyotes and I'll just chew them away. Well, I approached the trees and I noticed there was some kind of creature, or person, standing behind one of the trees but I only could see half of its face peeking at me. I let out a who's there, and the one thing turned into six things, all peeking from behind the trees at me. I panicked, started to fall backward and shot off around towards the trees. I stood up and looked back at the trees and noticed the things were gone. I walked over to the trees, gun still pointed. I saw the tree that I shot, with a small pool of fresh blood next to it. I immediately found the blood trail and it led to the irrigation canal that was adjacent to the trees. Well, I also noticed that the blood trail continued on the other side of the canal, which was 15 feet across. There were no footprints or anything. So whatever this was had to jump around 15 feet to get to the other side, it couldn't have walked around the canal, it went on for over a mile. I never told anyone about what I saw. I just told my cousins that I scared off some coyotes. Every year when I went back to that area for dove season, I always wondered if those things were gonna come back for revenge was driving a quad on one of my buddy's properties about 8 p.m. ish. We would take turns riding it and doing laps around the property, pretty big about 50 acres surrounded by woods. There's a barbed wire fence around property that's hard to see at night so obviously I slow down as I'm getting close to it. As I start slowing down there is a star that catches my eye because it was real bright as I'm looking at it the star starts getting brighter. It was stationary with no movement as it got brighter and then it dimmed to reg brightness, once it dimmed to reg brightness it shot off like literally turned into a shooting star. 
I got creeped out and headed back. Don't know what it was but I am pretty sure it was a UFO definitely wasn't a star. Hunting alone in the middle of the Oregon Cascades, miles from many people, I'm sitting still watching a clearing when I hear a sound that I've never heard before or since. Only way I can describe it is that it sounded like wood cracking together, like someone hit a pine tree with a telephone pole and was doing their best Jose Conseco impression. The first time it happened I genuinely thought it was a gunshot because the initial crack was so loud but the last half of the sound was very clearly a tree being struck and shaking. There was a flood of instant terror once my mind worked out the calculation for how hard you would have to hit a tree to replicate the sound. I'd estimate the source was on the other side of a small valley from me well over 300 yards. I know it sounds stupid but it was such a tremendous show of force I instantly started making my way back to my truck. I've been hunting all my life and I'm an avid firearm enthusiast I go shooting almost every weekend. This was 100% not gunfire. Pine trees and cedar trees will also sometimes make poping sound in the morning and into the afternoon as the sun warms them. It was orders of magnitude louder than that. You're typical not a hunter, but someone who was walking in the woods. It was like September a few years ago. I was walking through the woods by my grandma's house as a memory thing because I used to play in those woods when I was little. I was alone and it was the golden hour, right before dark but not exactly light, I was walking my old path reminiscing about the stuff I used to do back there with my friends. I came across the fort we built out of pallets. At this point I was excited it was still here but as I got closer I realized a homeless person had been living in it. Which didn't really surprise me as it was a common thing for homeless people to do, I keep on my path to the little tiny pond that we used to drink around. That's when I started freaking out because I felt like I was being followed, I kept hearing leaves rustling and I was ready to just go back home, so that's exactly what I did. I'm not dumb I'm not about to die in the woods. As I backtracked back to the house, I heard the loudest most shrill scream I've honestly ever heard which scares me even more, mind you I could see my grandma's house from where I was, I ran back home and my grandma was out drinking her coffee on the back patio, I went to sit down and she asked why I was out of breath, after explaining the entire story she told me she had been outside and didn't hear a thing. To this day it still freaks me out to the point I won't even go in her backyard anymore. If you spend enough nights camping, weird things will happen. A couple of years ago, two buddies and I did a month plus long road trip around the US. We would camp in US Forest Service or Bureau of Land Management areas, and we were driving my pickup truck so we could get back in some fairly deep wilderness on forest roads. After about 15 nights on the road, we ended up in some BLM land near Black Canyon of the Gunnison National Park in Colorado. It was our last night in Colorado, and we were exhausted from doing a 14 er earlier that morning. We found the coordinates of a campsite online, and arrived to the edge of the pavement at about 6 p.m. Ahead of us was a dusty two-track lane that snaked those scraggy trees and brush, and made its way to the top of a hill that had views of snow-capped peaks. We hadn't passed a car in a long time. Our truck makes it to the site easily, but none of us get out yet. We sit inside and look around. There's a fire pit, lots of trees, but also an abandoned couch and some other signs of human waste. Not great vibes, but, it's getting late and we aren't keen on the idea of driving more. We hop out and start walking around, cautiously approaching some garbage bags wrapped in duct tape. This seems like a place that we would find a body, I say to my friends. They agree, we notice a trail that seems to go in a circle around the top of the hill, so we decide to check that out before we commit to staying. We find some more trash and human waste, but nothing that makes us feel like we should leave. We decide to cowboy camp, sleep on a tarp beneath the stars, and have a nice fire going. We finish off a case of beer, but even with the inebriation we still feel uneasy. Every couple minutes one of us will shine a light into the woods, thinking that we heard something. Even though this is our 20th consecutive night sleeping outside, it doesn't feel right. But it's late, so we start getting ready for bed. We are all carrying bear spray and headlamps. I step into the woods to go pee, and walk about 15 feet without turning on my light. As I'm standing there peeing, I decide I should turn on my headlamp since the fire messed up my night vision. When I see what the beam of light illuminates, my knees nearly buckle. Jaw is dropped. I stand in silence for 10 seconds before calling out to my friends. GGGGG guys. Dot did you see this? 
In the center of my beam is a bunch of bleached bones wrapped in barbed wire, hanging from a branch directly above the trail we had walked in the daylight. We would have certainly noticed them in the daylight. They must have been hung once it got dark, while we sat only 25 feet away. The consensus among us was, fuck that. So we snapped a couple photos of it before throwing our stuff in the park and hopping in the truck. We drive a little ways up the road to a national park campground. I've never felt so happy to pay $25 and have neighbors nearby. My hypothesis is that a rancher with a grazing lease put the bones up to scare off the scum that leave all their trash at the campsites. They're probably cow bones. Still scared the hell out of me though. Growing up in the mountains I was always well prepared for any situation. One evening during a camping trip, my friend and I decided to take a night walk. We saw another fire burning off in the distance and decided to get closer. We announced ourselves, as to not startle them, and as we got closer we noticed about eight people all wearing black robes standing around the fire in complete silence. My friend and I looked at each other and ran as fast as we could back to camp. Definitely interrupted a cult ritual. Was not prepared for that one. Not me but my dad. A few years ago he was working on this big ass ranch with his cousin for a very rich guy on Texas. He was gonna work with two other people, ex-militaries, sergeants both of them, tough fuckers who had their share at war. The two soldiers had been on the ranch longer than my dad and cousin, they knew the in and outs. So one day my dad asks about the forest, if they could go to see it or camp someday, the sergeants say yes, we can take you there, but only during the day, we are not spending the night there. My dad is now confused how second John Wicks are afraid of the dark, so the creepy thing is that the ranch has this night vision cameras in the forest that take pictures of movement and deers late at night. The soldiers found two pictures in the camera with two little girls alone next to fucking deers way past midnight, since then they don't step into the forest at night, they concluded that one of the girls was wearing a Navajo dress maybe, in a place miles away from civilization and caged property. I have the two pictures I've seen them, it's one girl about four years old alone in the woods and the deer are around like WTF, their one is a bit older girl like maybe eight years old looking at a deer while another deer is looking directly at her, and no they are not far away, the girls are practically a pet distance from the deers. My dad, my brother and I took our camper van away camping one weekend. On the first night at about 2 am there was a massive bang and for a few seconds the van shook violently. My dad jumped up and ran outside to see what it was but there was nothing there and no damage to the van. He decided it must have been a dream and was about to go back to bed when I heard my brother ask him what caused the van to shake and my dad had no answer. We all went back to sleep and forgot about it until the morning when we got up to take the dog for a walk. My aunt and uncle had their camper parked up next to ours, as we passed them my uncle came running out with this terrified look on his face. He said that at about 2 am his van shook like mad and there was a loud bang but he was too afraid to go out and check what it was so he had been waiting for us to get up. At first we thought it a deer must have hit the van or something but it shook for more than just a split second it was a few seconds at least. Also what is the chances of one deer running into two different vans? Neither van had any damage to them at all. We don't often get earthquakes in the UK, and there was nothing in the news about any quakes in the morning. Eventually we just wrote it off as some strange happening and forgot about it. TLDR at the end. I grew up in the small town in Nova Scotia, which was founded in the mid-1700s, has a very small population, and is surrounded by woods next to the ocean. All three of my scary wood stories happened there, despite me moving three times, both also in the woods. Once when I was in my teens, I was walking paths through the woods with a friend. These paths are on the grounds of where an old asylum used to be. The asylum was named the Poor's Farm, and was established in 1887. While we were walking we noticed there was an opening with a very little gap between the long grass and the tree line. We had the urge to go down it and see if maybe there would be a view of the ocean. We got to the end and just started waking through the woods when we came across some very old wooden crosses in the ground. No path leading to it just a random opening we happened to find. We both got a really uneasy feeling, and I felt someone was watching me though it was probably just my paranoia, so we turned around and left. 
We always knew there were people buried from the asylum but assumed they were all in the cemetery you see when you first enter the paths. The second was around this same area, years before that. I was about 12, 22 now, me and my best friend would go biking just about every day, and always went to this spot we called the rocks. Just a big weird black rock formation on the water. To get to the rocks, you had to go in a path behind the old playground. The path forked off in a lot of places and a few times we would take a wrong turn but always ended up around the same spot. One day when we took one of the wrong turns, we came across what looked to be a very small cemetery with two or three tombstones. We were too afraid to take a closer look so we just kept going down the path, which after a few minutes of going through the woods opened up to a view of the ocean. As we came through the opening we both stopped dead in our tracks. There was a man, I'm bad with distances and this was 10 plus years ago, maybe 100 meters in front of us. He was staring right at us, as if he knew we were going to be coming, and was wearing a top hat and a fancy suit with the long back flaps that could only be described as clothing from the early 1900s. Without a word we both turned around and took off running, dragging our bikes along with us couldn't ride them through the paths due to tree roots everywhere. When we finally reached the playground we both collapsed and were all did you see that? basically sat there in hysteria for a while. I've always tried to brush this off as two preteens writing off each other's imaginations and over exaggerating the whole thing but to this day it still give me the chills thinking about it and the fact we both seen the same thing. The third was more recent years, probably around 18 years old me and some friends decided to try and met at the house of the same friend from the last story. We decided to go for a walk to meet up with our cousin. There was a group of four of us, all girls. We were coming down a street with no houses besides one at the very end. As we got close to it I looked up and suddenly something on the front porch moved. Me and one of my friends both stopped, which caused the others to as well, and I asked if she seen it too, which she replied yes. Of course thanks to the drugs we had taken, the thing took many different forms in my mind before I realized what it actually was. It turned its head and we all at the same time whispered something along the lines of it's a huge cat. One of my friends starts screaming to call the cops, which we all object. What's a cop going to do after a 15 minute drive to use, not to mention we were high as kites, we all stand there contemplating what to do with this big cat looking at us, it crouches down like how a house cat would before attacking. I tell my friends we need to back up slowly until we get around the bend and then run. We do this, and as we're running I start throwing up from the fear while running as fast as I can and collapse in someone's lawn. The lawn happened to have kids baseballs laying around and my friends pick them up ready to fight the creature that never came. We got picked up and spent the whole night trying to figure out what kind of cat it could be since we don't usually have big cats around here. I think we settled on a lynx, though honestly to this day I'm not completely sure that's what it was. Most of our friends don't even believe us. TLDR, 1. Creepy middle of the wood cemetery from old mental asylum 2. Possible ghost yet a favorite childhood hangout 3. Drug filled large cat sighting that ends in me puking while running at full speed and collapsing in a stranger's lawn. Okay I've got two I will speak about but there's others. 1. Last year I went deer hunting and I usually jump hunt, walk through the bush by myself with an old 30 to 30 lever action. Got out late and I had managed to get out to the back fields, and the sun was just cresting the horizons, now at this time I usually head in because you're not supposed to shoot half an hour till dark, well this night I figured I'd go through the cedar groves at the back of the property just to see if there's tracks. The property had been my family's for my whole life and I know it like the back of my hand. Well right as dark crest the wolves coy wolves which are about 60 to 80 ballsy bastards start up. Now I always enjoyed their howling till tonight. That night they came up behind me and I could hear four howl out less than 50 yards behind me. All I had was four rounds in my gun and a cell phone flashlight. I start walking as quick as I could to get through the cedars a 45 minute ordeal. Where another four wolves had cut me off. I never fired my gun but they blind charged me a few times and would start going into a circle pattern off running circles around me. I'd hear them start to do the same noises as a dog on a deer hunt. Twice they brushed me they got so close. 
By the time I got out of the cedars I was so happy to have at least a shot but I had an open field to cross and I could hear them on the outskirts the whole time. Also just think of that with only about 5 yards of sight off the cell phone light. It took me an hour to stop shaking when I got in. Driving out later that night I could see where they'd followed me up the driveway and there was 21 or so tracks. 2. Staying out an old cabin I had an interaction with Nanabush, one of the old trickster spirits, I was just finishing up for the night and this bird starts slamming into my window for a solid 5 minutes, middle of February, at 11 pm is odd to see a bird let alone one doing this. I don't think anything of it and carry on though till I'm ready for bed. Going for my bedtime smoke, I see the bird clinging to the screen door. Pushing on out it flies at me twice then hits all the windows on that side of the house. As it disappears I hear something scuttling towards me and I see a figure 3 feet tall running on two legs in the dark between the vehicles. I just boot out of that situation and locked the doors and went to bed. First of all why am I reading this thread at 4 am? I'm never camping again after seeing all these stories. Sharing another that still creeps me out. TLDR at end. I was in my 20s and about to backpack overseas for a while so my best bud and I decided to have a little farewell camping trip. We lived in Flagstaff AZ and she told me about this free creekside camping spot she found. It ended up being just right next to this abandoned new age retreat where a lot of people died in their sweat lodge. But shockingly that has nothing to do with what happened just added creepiness I guess. We drive up to the site and of the six slightly spaced out camping sites, they're all occupied. One site had a tent set up but no car around it which in retrospect was possibly a red flag seeing as this area wasn't a walkable place where you just cruise around on foot it was off of a highway. Anyways we are already there and it's evening time so we decide to just make our own little site in between the no car camp and the one further down. We were only in one small tent with two small dogs and figured we didn't take up much space anyways. As we are unwinding, we start having some drinks, bad idea, and make a little fire to cook hot dogs on, I can't help but take notice to the campsite without the car just distant enough to now see a man in his early 40s behaving strangely. He looks over at us a lot, at one point he's just standing still in the middle of the creek staring at something for long periods, taking his tent down, putting it back up, clanking pans together behavior very similar to someone who's high on meth or dealing with some sort of mental illness. I start getting this really bad feeling. As it becomes totally dark, we are by the fire when I hear someone approach us. It's the guy. My parents pug was with us he's incredibly friendly to everyone and at this moment he hid under my car. Something I've never seen him do. The man begins talking to us and my completely non-street smart friend invites him to sit down by the fire with us, I know what on earth was she thinking. As he began talking to us I almost immediately knew he was out of whack as he described the endless gold pyramids that were located across the creek and the gold skulls and just weird shit. He mentioned how his sister got a boyfriend in Oregon kicked him out and he was now homeless. He then mentioned in this really uncomfortable tone that he saw us two beautiful girls and couldn't stop wondering what we were up to. That was when I immediately noped and abruptly told him okay well you can head back to your camp now have a great night in which he got up and walked back over. I immediately told my friend, who was still so oblivious, that we were unsafe and we had two options, risk getting a DUI, leave our stuff behind and get somewhere safe or get her boyfriend here ASAP. She called her boyfriend and he agreed to drive straight to us, 45 minutes, during the 45 minutes waiting for him which felt like an eternity I clutched my knife and his weird behavior continued, pacing non-stop slash clanking rocks together slash jumping in the creek slash screaming at something to get away from him total delusional manic behavior. Her boyfriend finally arrived but the fun didn't stop. Boyfriend had Oregon license plates which is relevant, with having some relief of an extra person with us. We tried to relax and have a somewhat decent farewell camp trip until the guy came back again but this time his tone was completely different. When boyfriend introduced himself, scary guy wouldn't shake his hand he had this you encroached on my property type of vibe. He left and then wandered back two separate times each time with some weird delusion. The first time he was going on that the boyfriend stole his cigarettes and mentioned his car in Oregon then I started piecing together that somehow in his delusion he was beginning to think that the boyfriend was the guy that kicked him out in Oregon. 
We tried to de-escalate and decided to go to bed hoping he would just forget about us and do the same, as if people on meth go to sleep lol, anyway my friend and her boyfriend passed out immediately and I proceeded to lay away the entire night clutching my knife. He paced around our tent multiple times that night. At one point just as a horror film begins I saw his shadow against the wall of the tent lit by the moon you know just fun things you see moments before you die. He rummaged through our stuff at one point and drank all our beer. Somehow we survived the night and I could no longer hear him as the sun was rising. We got the heck out of there as early as we could. About a year later I went back, why, with a group of people to the same camp area and just around where we camped that one time was an abandoned tent just in a pile a bottle of holy water a crystal and a book about horse training jotted with pages of notes and ramblings. Maybe his? Maybe this place was haunted? Heck I don't know but I'm glad he didn't murder us. TLDR, two girls camp next to a possibly schizophrenic or meth user who creeps us out all night. Probably gonna get buried but here goes. I live in an area where we have quite a lot of forests and farmland. One night me, my brother, and my dad were driving to his house from my mom's in his truck in an area where it was thick woods on one side of the road and on the other side a thin tree lean then a field. We were just listening to the local rock station and talking when my dad yells deer, and slams on the brakes and stops a few feet ahead of it. It just stood there and looked at us and when we looked at it we realized it wasn't a deer. It had the body of a large dog, antlers, the hooves of a cow, and a misshapen almost human face. Its legs were hairless, red, and covered in sores. My dad said what the fuck and we all just kept looking at it and after standing there for a few more seconds it runs of into the woods. I've never seen anything like it again and we never talk about it. I had forgotten about it until I saw it in a dream last night and the memories of that just came rushing back. Short version of encounter of some sort in the wilds of New Mexico. Mogollon Rim. Transition zone between desert and deep forest of the Gila wilderness, America's first designated wilderness. Mix of pinyon pines, scrub, prickly pear, chalice and other weird stuff. Lots of old mine tunnels and shafts nearby. Beautiful sunset vistas. Pitch black summer night. Super still. Awesome stargazing and Mars was really close, closest in a generation. Once done with star and planet gazing, retired to the pop-up camper to have a snack and read. Saw a bear up close, enough, and personal earlier in the day, so instead of cooking just ate cold cuts and cheese and crackers, later, chips and salsa. Pop-up camper with interior lights on, windows all zipped down. Wishing for a breeze to cool off but basically nothing. Barely a sound, and surprisingly, no crickets. At some point, wife and I both look above book level and raise eyebrows to each other as we hear something stomp right through camp. No precursor sounds like twigs or bushes, just stomp 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 right outside the camper, seemingly between it and the tow vehicle. Minutes later, this terrible screeching monkey slash bird racket starts up. Single voice. Hair raises up on my neck and wife and I are now in nonverbal communication, like, what the heck is that and what should we do? Sounds like it is maybe 15 to 20 yards away, uphill a little. Sound stops just as suddenly as it started. No extra sounds like footsteps or twigs or branches or anything. We talk about what it might be for a few minutes, but then go back to reading. Sound continues to start up out of nowhere and stop all of a sudden, over and over. Very unnerving. Does not respond to my eventual yells back at it or are making our own rakehead with pots and pans. Yes, the shotgun was in the back of the vehicle, so I did not want to go get it with that sound basically right outside the pop-up tent camper. No, we did not have a strong portable light source. Finally got fed up enough to brave going outside to figure out just what the heck it was as it did not match my internal catalog of animal sounds at all and it was freaking me out. That's when it stopped for good. Still, no additional sounds of movement or anything, and the night was dead still, so still you could have heard bugs in the leaf litter, but again, no sounds at all. I've listened to a lot of animal calls since, and nothing matches my memory, or my wife's memory. This was before smartphones. 
does not really match any Bigfoot or whatever sounds from the internet. Best I can say is super loud cross between a monkey and a large bird. Next day, I put my modest tracking skills to the test. In camp or the surrounding area, no footprints, no scat, no plant breaks, hair, feathers, or dis rubed bark on the tree up by where it sounded like it was calling from. TLDR, super quiet night in remote desert forest contact zone, something stomps through camp, proceeds to screech away periodically over and over, does not respond in any way to our increasingly loud attempts to get its attention or run it off, then stops all of a sudden, and no trace whatsoever the next day. Went on a four-day three-night hiking trip with my father sister and couple cousins out in Glacier NP. Last night they recamped at No Name Lake, hiked the Dawson Pitamakan Pass loop counterclockwise. We finally reached camp late that day just before dark and you could still see the white mountain goats walking along Razor's Edge on the steep Pompeli Pillar, PP, if you've been to No Name Lake you know what I'm talking about. I thought it was incredible how the goats were able to keep their balance walking along a sheer cliff like this but it was really cool to watch. We finally settle in and I end up passing out pretty early, well before 8 p.m. At around 130 to 2 a.m. dead middle of the night I am suddenly woken up incredibly confused to what I thought were gunshots. Pop 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 pop, very loud and repetitive. You could imagine my confusion as there is no good reason for these sounds coming from that direction. It happened for about 30 to 40 seconds then stopped as quickly as it started. The only thing I could think of was that it was the mountain goats walking and knocking down big pieces of shale. As the side of the cliff was all rock and shale or maybe a rock slide. But these pieces would have had to have fallen on each other perfectly in order to make these sounds. The oddest thing was that no one else in my party heard them and the other couple camping there didn't hear them either. I told the story the following morning and got some funny looks as you could imagine. We go to this campsite every year and we decided to drive around and see what we could find. It turned to night and we were about 30 minutes away from our camp. We were walking around and trying to be super quiet. We saw what looked like a campsite because we saw glowing lights. We creeped closer and we started hearing noises surrounding us. It freaked us all out but once we got closer to the campsite we saw what it really was. It was a fire with lanterns everywhere. There wasn't anyone there and it seemed like they just left. The noises got louder and we were all pretty sketched out. We got closer to the fire and inside we saw pounds of ashes and some bones. It was scary but really it could have just been someone barbecuing. We thought that until one of us saw what looked like a human skull. The noises were really loud now and we knew that the longer we stayed the more of a chance they would come back. We started walking back and we weren't using flashlights just to be safe. There were trees blocking the view partially but you could still partially see through it. We heard a camper door open and all these middle-aged ladies stormed out with torches. We all slowly walked a mile back to the car. The worst part was having to sleep out in tents in the woods after all that. I've shared this story of my father. TLDR at the bottom my father likes to go hunting by himself. I tried to tag along as much as possible, but I always went to school. On this particular day, when he was packing up to leave for the night, he had a strange encounter. If you like to go camping, hiking, or hunting, you know that even when the sun sets behind the mountains, there is still enough light to be able to see. Pack your things without a flashlight. Well my father said that as the sun started setting behind the mountains, and he started packing his equipment into his truck, a random woman appeared out of thin air. This was in late fall and it was fairly cold out and the woman was wearing a short sleeve shirt, shorts, and white sneakers. There were no signs that the woman had walked up to him because he checked his surroundings constantly and there was no one to be seen. Where my father parked, we always camped there every summer and you can see more than 100 yards up and down the road. My father also said that earlier that day, as he drove by the campgrounds to the public hunting land, there were no campers, trailers, tents, or possible hikers present. He knew that there was a possibility of him being alone that day. Knowing my father, he never left his guard down and was always aware of his surroundings. The woman startled my dad and he secretly reached for his concealed weapon in his waistband and tried his best to make sure she wouldn't notice. Anyways, my father asked if the woman was camping and the woman had one simple reply, yes. The woman then walked around my dad's truck as if she was inspecting it until she came back to the spot where she began. The woman didn't say anything at all during this altercation, and she proceeded to head up the trail to the campgrounds closer to California 155. 
On this dirt road that merged off CA-155, there were two main campgrounds, one about two miles off CA-155 and another three to five miles out. After a few minutes, my father was done packing, and he got into his truck and drove back up the dirt road towards CA-155 so he could head home. As he passed the campgrounds closer to CA-155, he noticed that there were no tents, cars, trailers, or any signs that someone was going to camp there that night. He thought to himself that maybe she was camping farther out, so he turned his truck around and headed for the campgrounds farther away from CA-155. To his surprise, there were no signs of people camping there that night. He then came to the consensus that maybe the woman was just hiking, but he realized that the nearest town to him was about 15 miles down CA-155 and it was way too late for someone to be hiking. He then started to raise suspicion. He drove back to where he parked and looked for footprints. Like I stated, this was just a dirt road and it hadn't rained yet, so footprints should be visible. My father did not find any footprints at all. He followed, on foot, to where he thought she would have headed up to the campgrounds closer to CA-155, and after a while he could finally see some footprints. However, the footprints were barely visible and they seemed to just start out of nowhere. After a while they just went right off the road and there was nothing to be seen, as if she just wandered off. He knew that he had maybe encountered a ghost that day, but he was not sure. He came home and told my mom about it and she said that one of my father's close friends did passed away earlier that week, and that maybe that encounter was his way of saying his last goodbyes before he headed off into the afterlife. Which kinda makes sense since my father's friend got really sick and couldn't go hunting with my father anymore and they always hunted together. When my father's friend was still alive, he always said that they would go on one last hunting trip together, but he passed away before they could do it. My father then lost contact with his friend. Also, the woman walked around my dad's truck as if she was inspecting it. My dad had always wanted the same truck as his friend and told him multiple times that he would buy a truck similar to his, but my father never bought one until after his friend got deathly sick and lost contact. TLDR, my father encountered a ghost that could have been his late, but very close friend. So, I've been going to child camp for 20 days during summer holidays for like 7 years now. But one year was super weird. I was like 13 years old. The camp is located in middle of nowhere, near river and half of the camp is in the forest. We went to a whole day trip, and when we were going back by train. Our leader of the camp had a strange encounter in the train with an older man, she was like 21 and Zhe was around 50. He told her something like lady, you have such a slim and beautiful fingers and anything more. We got out of the train and the man did too. Later that night that same girl had an encounter in her tent. A figure standing in the entrance and looking straight to her. She though it was one guy from the camp who kept making fun of her. In the morning she asked him what he was doing there and he told her he has no idea what she's taking about. Next few nights kids were seeing man in black hood in the camp walkieb around and cookieb shelves, which makes very loud noise. And even I heard it. Funny was that nobody told it to anyone else just to the leader of the camp so the yudn't lie because nobody knew that somebody else saw him too. Big guys even kept a wash with axes at all possible entrances and one of them saw a light from flashlight in a hill, when they sprinted up, nobody was there. So since then, nobody knows who it was or what was he doing there. Kinda psycho story and I even have Guibamst now writing it. So I live in northern Minnesota, have my entire life, I grew up in a house about an hour away from Itasca State Park, if anyone is familiar with the area it's pretty heavily wooded and gets extremely cold during the winter here, I now live farther north but I digress. One year we were having a bonfire, my brother and mom were outside with me, about to turn in for the night, we had pretty dense woods around our house, about 30 yards away on either side, we heard some branches snapping and rustling in the woods close to the edge, we got kind of freaked out after making noise and it didn't stop and ran up to the porch. My mom was on the top step by the door and my brother and I were on the ground, we turned around looking for the source of the noise, well something weird happened. We heard what sounded like a bull huffing, and a loud growl, and then a huge crashing noise, whatever it was broke a dead tree, we tried tipping and breaking it several times, this thing was solid. 
My brother and I shoved my mom out of the way and sprinted inside. She still brings it up how we left her to die. My dad said it was a bear but I've never heard a bear move through brush so loud, and I've never heard a black bear make that noise. It was Bigfoot, changed my mind. I shared this story with some people, so now time to share with you guys. Me and my best friend were going hunting, for the fifth time I think together. We're we're in our 18th hour in and it is like 10 or 11 pm and we had hunted about 14 deer, and we're going to an open field with few trees. So halfway there I start seeing dead deer that were just lying on the ground so luckily I decided to take my 12 gauge with me in case animals attack me. The first deer I saw had its body cut in half but when we inspected there were no organs slash flesh were inside, so we thought they were wolves or foxes that had killed it. So we stayed very alert. Next thing I walked not even 500 feet from that I start seeing more and more dead deer. We originally thought it was wolves or foxes, but then here's where thing got crazy. I see deer with the body cut open like a rug or something and covered in blood. Next thing, I saw a deer with its head open and half of the brain was out and skull fragments were around. Now we though it was hunters that forgot their hunt. But when we go further, we start seeing deer in unimaginable poses slash places. They were on top of, not too high, around 10 feet, branches, so we turn back. We hear a stampede and decide to do a quick hunt. I just see a dark figure moving very quick and hunting them quickly. Now, when we shot it, my friend said the shot was hit, he had the better thermal scope, but still no effect, so when we shoot it again, it turns, starts moving to us, I get my shotgun, and shoot it then it disappears. I got scared so we saw the deer and same thing. Missing brains, organs. So we decided to immediately turn back. I never forgot this. Scared the shit out of me. I don't work in the forest or anything but my mom and I grew up in a very very small Acadian community in rural New Brunswick, Canada outside of Moncton the settlement is Notre Dame, that was mostly woods. Anyway. If you didn't know, cougars slash pumas slash mountain lions aka eastern cougar are extinct in my area of eastern Canada, but, many people in my community could beg to differ. Most of these are not my experiences but they're all true. Anyway first was my mom. When she was a teenager she was getting out the car and going to the house at night, when she heard an extremely loud cat roar slash growl slash sound. It was much louder than any bobcat, lynx, cat, so on and she saw a very large black cat shape move in the dark. This was probably in the 80s or 90s next is my aunt. She lived about 5 minutes away. Her house was very wooded. Anyway, she has seen it and cougar larger than any other feline in the Maritimes. When she went out, she found the paw prints and took a picture. They were not bear, lynx, bobcat, none of that shit. 100% cougar. She saw it again a second time. This was within my lifetime, I am 17 born in 2002. I was around 10. Third was my next door neighbor. It was dusk and she was outside, and she saw across the road, there is a vastly wooded area with an extremely steep hill that leads to the river. Along the road she saw a black panther. Not a bear or anything. Definitely that. She had seen it twice or so. This was within my lifetime as well I probably was a baby when it happened though. Last that I know of was my cousin. My parents, brother, cousins, uncles and I all lived with my nan at one point and while it was just my uncle, cousins and nan. My little cousin who was around 12 was outside, taking her chihuahua to do her business and she heard the same growl my mom did, like the cougars you hear in movies and she saw a tan cougar in the long grass behind our house. She freaked out and ran inside. My experience was I was playing around the river and found large animal bones and extremely cat-like paw prints in the sand and dirt along the river. Another of mine was my friend and I got in the woods connected to the trail either right before winter or right after. We heard those big cat growls and saw tan body in the bushes. We then ended up in a neighbor's yard in the next town over, St. Antoine after we made it out of the dense and large woods. The craziest part? My nan had a news article from back in the day, that a circus train crashed in the area and there were animals on it. Wanna know which ones? 
cougars. I think a black one and a tan one. Majority of the animals, especially the cougars, were survivors and were never searched for as it was most likely too much of a hassle. My theory is the black cougar that escaped perhaps bred with any cougars in the area. The last sighting I heard was my cousin's. That's the end. Thanks.